with Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Part of the Collector. What's going on? And we have a special guest with us today. Introduce yourself. I'm Mick Sawyer. Uh, the Mick you... Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, you may know me from our production company, We Massacre, play Sheriff Ringo Anderson in the Rock Bottom Creek trilogy. Also, the front man of the metal band Burial at Sea. Yeah. So, so, like, somebody's actually done something. Yeah, all right. <laughs> just me and, me and Greg's just hanging out in a room. Oh, man, you guys are doing more than most people that we, especially people when me and Greg know. Like, like Yeah, a lot of people talk about doing stuff, but yeah, don't actually do it. So absolutely. I'm glad we were able to finally do this. Yeah. But we try, yeah. I mean, I always thought that, especially as many conversations me and you have had in the yeah. past, that this would be so perfect. For, like, so when I saw that you guys had war with cinema, I'm like, I'm going to listen to every fucking episode that comes out. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, Cause I know it's going to be good. Well, you're our first guest and that's an honor. Yeah. Ever since Greg told me what y'all, have, what y'all did and uh, you know, what y'all had going on. I was like, man, I really love to talk to that guy. Absolutely. Yeah. He was telling me, I'm like, this it's going to be fun. Like, yeah. I've been dying to get you two in the same room for a while now. Cause you guys are like, you yeah. guys don't even know it, but you guys are kindred spirits when it comes to like movies. Yeah, he said uh, Dark Knight trilogy. I was like, all right, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's interesting because I've had a chance to listen to every episode pretty mm-hmm. much, and like, there's a lot of things that I agree with you on, and there's a lot of things that I agree with Greg on. So it's like I'm that perfect middleman for for this kind of discussion because. Like you like a lot of blockbuster stuff too. I'm I a do. sucker for blockbuster stuff yeah. too. Like especially if it's Schwarzenegger or Stallone or something like that. Yeah. You know, I'm there all day long. I mean, I fucking love Last Action Heroes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know, That's a true like, Schwarzenegger fan, right? There. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like even people shit on that movie, but I still they don't, love it. Those people don't know how to have fun. No, I don't think so. I don't think so because you Is know. T- let me ask you, like you're, you're a big Schwarzenegger fan. Is True Lies in your top five? I don't know if it would be in my top five, probably top ten, because, oh man, wow, nobody's ever asked me that. Before. I fucking <laughs> love True Lies, man, dude. I, I that's Jamie Lee Curtis is so fucking fine. Oh, in that don't movie. get me started, man. That strip tease, man. I think I went into manhood when that shit happened. <laughs> I know I, I did. did. I love I, that fucking scene. That's man. one of. The, well, maybe I'm getting too personal, but <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, like, it's, it's great, man. <laughs> no, I I had a fucking crush on Jamie Lee Curtis for like there is another movie that she did in the early 90s called Blue Steel and it was mm. directed by Catherine Bigelow that did Point Break and you know Near Dark and stuff like that. Her biggest film is probably like Zero Dark 30 or The Hurt Locker. And like I've always had a thing for women with shorter hair. I really? just I always thought that was like one of the sexiest things ever. You know, only my, certain ones can pull it off. My, yeah, like, yeah, my that's opinion. true. That's true. Demi like more can my, do it. You know? Oh God, yeah. Like my fiance has short hair. She didn't do it because of based off that reason. It just kind of worked out that way. But yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis and, subliminally just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? Look at her hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but you know. It's weird though because my my crush for Jamie Lee Curtis I don't think really became relevant until the movie she did after Halloween mm-hmm. because like just you know, Blue Steel you got you got to watch that movie it's a great movie I don't think I've seen that one it's basically she plays a New York cop and um, she's like a rookie or whatever and she meets this guy which is played by Ron Silver that um is he's this obsessed psychopath and me and my me and my girlfriend or fiance are very into those obsession type of movies like fatal attraction fear. yeah yeah fear stuff God, like i that. love fear too Sucker. And, and william peterson is in that which you know still i might be in the minority opinion on this but I still think is the best Will Graham. I love Edward Norton mm-hmm. as yeah. Will Graham and Red Dragon, but Manhunter, I still don't think you could fuck with that movie. Like because Tom Noonan like as Red the Dragon, Tooth though. Fairy, I I did. I actually yeah. do like Red Dragon. Usually, if there's a remake, I usually have like you know the opposite opinion. I yeah. can't. They they just can't exist with each other for the most part. Mm-hmm. But that's one of those few exceptions. Like, but. Is Red Dragon really a remake though? Because it was pre existing material. It was a book first. Right. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if it's really 
a quote unquote, you know, actual. I think at remake. that point, people were just like, anything we can throw. Uh, Anthony Hopkins in yeah, exactly. to play Hannibal Lecter. Poor it's Brian. Like, got, got to give a name drop to Brian Cox, though, as the original Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> like, because I, I love Brian Cox. I'm a little biased when it comes to him. But yeah. But yeah. Like, uh, so you got to, you know, uh, tell me uh, how you want to present this whole, uh, you know, discussion or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I you gave me the idea. I didn't originally now tell him what it's really about, man. <laughs> what? Tell him what it's really fucking about. When you said you wanted to have him on, yeah, because this man told me something that I'm hoping he he's lying because yeah. he has a he has a tendency to do that. Like he says <laughs> he says that you think Batman Begins is the best one in this trilogy. Oh, that's 100 percent true. That's, <laughs> let me get the setup before saying. you jump in. <laughs> He originally, like, I didn't want to, I didn't think about having guests on this podcast, and then right. Mick messaged me one day, and he's like, hey, I would really love to be on the podcast one day, and now a light bulb went off in my head, like, maybe it would be a good thing to, like, bring people on and let them talk about movies that they want to talk about. Especially as somebody that's actually been in a fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's perfect, perfect <clears throat> reference. So I figured when I have people on, they get to pick the movie, and you picked the whole Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. So it's it it's great. it's kind of hard when it you know with that specific trilogy to 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 talk about one without talking about the others you know because yeah. they're they're all great in their own right because like when the Dark Knight came out I put it on par with Terminator Two Judgment Day Aliens as one of the greatest sequels mm -hmm. ever made yeah. but it's still not my favorite in the trilogy like it Batman oh. Begins and the well, and you would think because I'm such a massive Gary Oldman fan, and Gary Oldman's role is so much bigger. People in the get Dark mad Knight. at me when I say that, like they underused <clears throat> Gary Oldman in the shit. I think they like. I know he was playing Commissioner Gordon, so he can't get too wild with it. But, but like, you know what's crazy though? He had a bigger role than Pat Hingle did in the yeah. Tim Burton Batman movies. Because, yeah. but then again, it's like no offense, but it's like who gives a fuck about that Gordon? Nobody wants <laughs> to talk about the Commissioner. You know I know, I mean? right? Like I do agree though. He is one of the most underrated characters in He's that. He's by far the best uh, Commissioner Gordon in any. That's what film me, media. That's what me sure, and Greg were like, just talking about too before you got here. We were like, it's gonna take a lot before you can find another guy that can play Jim Gordon better than Gary Oldman because not only did he play him well, yeah. but he looked the part. Oh, he for looked sure. Looked like Jim yeah. Gordon came out of the 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 uh, Batman Year One comic books into real life. Almost definitely. Sure. Yeah. I, I saw the Dark Knight trilogy before I saw Year One, and then I read Year One, and I'm yeah. like, fuck, that's Gary Oldman. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Right yeah. And, and, and it's like, it, I don't know if you guys have the same issue too, but when you read a Batman comic and you see Jim Gordon, you always think of Gary Oldman. I it's have like, been, yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it's funny. I think of the the animated series. Jim oh, Gordon. yeah. from right. um, The Tim Verse. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that for me, that was you know, my shit when I was I wonder who up. did the voice for that Gordon on the show. Because like, I hear him too when I read. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, it's kind of like but, uh, how people still have that attachment to Kevin J. O'Connor mm -hmm. as you know, the voice of the Batman uh, in the Batman animated series. Cause even though he never played a live action Batman, but his voice is so, Batman. yeah, he really is like he did all the Arkham games. Yeah. Like. Christian Bale is literally in second place as far as longest running Batman, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, he, but I, I totally understand why. Cause he's got, he does have probably one of the greatest Batman voices ever ever i agree with you <clears throat> i hated when people talked about the batman voice like it was too but we come from like a metal background so yeah. we're used to people with like distorted voice Exa voices so. exactly exactly so i kind of understand where they're coming from yeah i, I mean it's kind of one of those things like where you're like okay i get it i guess it's kind of an acquired taste but right. the one thing that always kind of bugged me though about the dark knight trilogy when people would bitch about christian bale's batman voice this is something that I noticed immediately during the first before the Dark Knight came out. Nobody said shit about Christian Bale's Batman voice until the Dark Knight came out. Well, I don't know if you guys noticed that, too, but like I, or maybe he just didn't have the full on Batman voice perfected. It was yet. a little it was when Pete Holmes made fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> For real. When Pete Holmes did Batman. 
then everybody was like, oh my God, I notice it now. You know what I mean? Like, Okay, yeah. The I... fact that he's a British dude doing an American accent, I think, is already, because oh. it's not like he's about to break into Cottony or anything. Like, he's doing a good job. Well, you, like... And it's funny, too, because I didn't know he was British until a few years after Batman Begins yeah. came out. I think like, all of us did. Yeah, yeah, because actually, you were around the time I was finding out a lot of our favorite actors were actually British. Yeah. <laughs> I looked up Everybody's Gary Oldman. British, I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you. And, and they're like some of the greatest actors ever because mm -hmm. when I looked up Gary Oldman, I'm like, oh my God, he's fucking British. Like, he's had an American accent in almost every movie i've ever seen like yeah. i don't i think i've seen maybe one two movies where he speaks with his native accent mm -hmm. but other than Grand that fire. <laughs> yeah oh yeah christian bale yeah that's right um and there is one other there's a recent one where he spoke with his native accent um i think it was the promise i believe that one with oscar isaacs yeah. like, I, like i think that's like the only other one. oh the prestige he, he spoke oh, yeah. with his native accent oh, right. in, that too. Feels it in that too. You know, uh, my wife and I just watched The Fifth Element. Uh, and he has that like Southern hick yes. accent in it. And it's so weird hearing it's, that thing, it, but it's so great. It's weird too, because <laughs> I almost feel like British actors can do Southern accents better than people from the South. Because if well, you, you just did uh, the, the one about the vice president vice oh that was great he too. did a great he Dick really Cheney. he really really that. did, he did a it, great it was Southern amazing draw on that one yeah. and, and sam rockwell as um bush as bush was great i didn't too. think he'd be that good he did a good bush oh too. yeah he was He's great a really good I, I mean brolin does brolin, a good bush. yeah i was gonna say brolin yeah. was good too but i think i think sam rockwell kind of has him beat a little bit on bush like the faces. Yeah. The way he would make. Oh my like, God. Yeah. So it's like that would really happen. Like. I just love like when, how simple his, his character is portrayed too, because he's like, man, why don't you get yourself some barbecue? You know, we yeah. got some good barbecue over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do a pretty good bush, man. <laughs> I always thought it was more like Bill Clinton. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. Like uh, Daniel Day Lewis, Irish. Liam Neeson, Irish. Killian Murphy has an amazing American accent, Irish. Um, you know what He's I heard? He's great on that fucking uh, cheeky, peaky blind. I hear about that great show so show, much. Man. I want to watch Tom Hardy's it. on that shit for a little bit. Yeah, and I know Sam yeah. Neill is on it, too. And I fucking for love a little Sam bit. Neill. He's not, yeah, yeah. First couple seasons, I think. Oh, okay. But the reason for that is because over in the UK... They grew up on American movies and American TV shows, so they have that a lot of sense. experience with the American accent. That's what, how they're able to perfect it better than we can perfect theirs because it's not till... bigger in America, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think our American actors though need to start kind of trying to one up the British actors, you know, because like they're kicking our British asses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like as I was thinking about that, I was like, there is very few American actors that I've seen do movies where they're speaking with a british accent you know it, like it's okay we got the canadians to take care of that for us because they're taking <laughs> yeah. over too yeah that's true <laughs> i mean as long as it's not keanu reeves because we all remember his british accent and bram stoker's dracula which is like i know where the bastard sleeps <laughs> It's like the worst British accent ever. I think people shit on Kevin Costner's half-assed British accent and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Like, yeah. oh, no, you haven't heard Keanu Reeves' his British accent, have you? That was pretty bad. That was way worse. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I still have not heard another actor that can compete with how bad a British accent could get. And that guy couldn't be more it's not probably British. probably why American actors don't do that now. Probably. Yeah, right. they probably you know what? Fuck it. Just give it to a British dude. They're man. traumatized. Let him, talk, let him talk how he wants to. I mean. Yeah, it's like, it's like you give like this great American actor a role. It's like, hey, but we want you to speak like a Brit. Like, dude, did you see Bram Stoker's Dracula? Keanu Reeves' performance traumatized me, so I don't ever want to speak with a British accent. It will boo me forever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's bring some of the contrast back to this podcast. Yeah. So Absolutely. Batman Begins is your favorite 
part of the trilogy, right, Mick? Yeah. And that's the least <sighs> favorite of yours. Out of the three. Yeah. It's not my it's not like I think it's a bad Batman movie by oh, any okay. means. Not like it doesn't belong in canon or nothing. Like it's yeah. much better than anything Joel Schumacher did. Oh, that's for damn for, sure. For, <laughs> I couldn't yeah. agree more. So with why that. is it your favorite? Like what makes it better than the other two? It's it's like well, you know, it's like it's it's interesting because when you say better I, I don't it's you know it's all subjective at the end of the day yeah, you know right. and and it's like for me it just kind of had I don't want to just make it I don't want to be like one of those people it's like oh I love this movie because it's sentimental to me so it should be better for you too because mm-hmm. I'm totally right. not that guy and that also fucking annoys me when I see people do that but one of the reasons why I loved it so much is for one it's probably the most um for Christopher Nolan it's like one of the most basic like storytelling devices in every in any of his films ever yeah he already yeah. had like the baseline mapped out for him yeah. he just had to lay his story on top of it yeah exactly I actually gave him credit for that when i saw the trailer for batman begins that they were going like for like a ninja batman you know yes. at first and i was like okay league of shadows cuz i knew See, from reading the comics oh, i absolutely. said all right that's what they're going with That'll be bad. And it was funny, too, because I remember I saw the trailer for it. Uh, I think it was when I went to go see the Exorcist prequel. Mm. And I saw the trailer for it and I heard Hans Zimmer's score, which, I mean, you guys know his score. Like, it's like, you know, people will be like, oh, well, he's also the reason why there's so many generic action scores. Like, well, because they're trying to to take his style exactly. instead of coming up with their own. Exactly, style. exactly. And, and and also, it's like just because he might have started that. Well, hey, motherfucker, he was on the forefront. Yep. You know, like he was yeah. doing that before a lot of composers were. And I've just always been such a massive fan of his, like Mm -hmm. ever since I was like 11 years old, like when I heard the Crimson Tide or Backdraft soundtrack, I was sold. And I heard that that score, the dun 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 dun. dun. I, like I got, I'm getting chills right now thinking yeah. about it. But like I saw that, and I saw Christian Bale walking with the black ninja suit to the planet. I'm like, this movie's gonna be fucking badass. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna be amazing. You got fucking Liam Neeson out there. Yes, on exa- ice. And you know what? I don't blades. know if you thought this too, but I was like, dude, Dark Man's in a Batman movie. <laughs> like it's great. Like and. Uh, this but, guy's got a particular set of skills. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. This was this was pre particular set of skills. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, but no, that's I think that's kind of the catalyst for that yeah, in a yeah, way. Yeah, he started it with that. Yeah. Y- you know, like, and but the other reason why I loved it so much was, um, you know, the trailer was already striking, and I was one of those guys <clears throat> that, um, you know, just to kind of give a little this conversation a little bit of context, like there is a website called Batman on Film. And I was following everything a year before the movie came out when they were casting for Batman Begins. And uh, I remember that they had, um, you know, when when they cast Christian Bale and I saw American Psycho. So I'm like, I don't think I, from what I remember, I I, love that movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. (laughs) But like, I think from what I remember, I wasn't like opposed to it, you know? Like, I was kind of like, oh, well, that's not who I expected, but, and then like, I think it was like maybe about six months before Batman Begins came out. I watched American Psycho and it just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, Oh my God, I totally see why they cast him because when you see him play the yuppie Patrick Bateman, that's kind of similar to Bruce Wayne. And it's like, okay, total. All right. That's fucking brilliant. And that's what people say too, is he, um, takes that character and basically makes him Bruce Wayne. And that's where he's drawing all of his inspiration from Bruce Wayne. And that makes so much sense. It it really does. But that's kind of what happened to me. I don't mean to jump too far ahead, but uh, Tom Hardy, when I'm like, Tom Hardy's going to be Bane? Like, I didn't know about Tom Hardy. And then you were like, watch Bronson. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And then I'm like, okay. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, he's Bane. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, Tom Hardy could do anything. I mean, shit, actually, I mean, even though Bronson came out before Warrior, but, like, I don't know why I didn't think of Warrior. For, no, actually, no, I think you turned me on to Warrior. I turned you on to yeah. Warrior because that's around the same time when I was watching Bronson. I'm like, damn, Tom Hardy's amazing. I want to watch everything that he does. Yeah. Warrior, like, just came out. So I'm like, I want to watch this. It became my favorite movie instantly. Yeah. And then I'm like, Nick, I know you like the fighter. We'll watch Warrior. <laughs> 
You know, and I feel kind of, ba- I actually kind of feel a little bit bad because I love the fighter and I went cra- like, he'll tell you that during that time, I had such a hard on for you that did. movie. Like, I was like, no, there is not any other boxing movie, maybe except for the Rocky series that can compete with that. And then I did saw Warrior. Southpaw? Yeah, Southpaw I was like great Southpaw too. too. And I, I, I saw the fighter. I mean, I saw Warrior and I'm like, Oh my God, Greg's right. This movie's fucking incredible. <laughs> like Only the, because it tugs on your heartstrings it, like throughout Christian the whole Bale movie. Christian Bale deserved it when he won for that. Oh, for oh, the like, fighter, yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Like, and it, you know, and I feel kind of bad because like Mark Wahlberg, not that he's a bad yeah. actor, but like he doesn't, he's not one of those guys that gets awards. No, you know what I mean, like, and, and Mark Wahlberg is that but kind I feel of like actor. He did a good job in it too. Yeah, like. absolutely. Like Mark Wahlberg, he, he's kind of like that reliable like. You know, he's gonna you're bring gonna, the people in. Yeah, he's gonna he's the, the meat back. and potatoes. Like yeah. you yeah. know, he's gonna give a good performance. He might not be the most versatile, and that's not necessarily a knock or being right. derogatory. He, he has, has his, his formula. moments, though. Yeah, he yeah. really does. Like, uh, yeah. Departed, I just watched recently, and I'm like, damn, Mark yeah, Wahlberg's good in this. In yeah, shit. yeah, absolutely. Like even in um, Fear or uh, yeah, Fear, uh, the Basketball Diaries, which I thought yeah. was cool because he did a lot of that w- in earlier. But like I'm saying, when he got big, you know, when he was just like, you know, making like those Transformers movies and everything, when he's just at the height, yeah, he didn't have to, you know what I mean? He didn't oh, have yeah. to show any kind of range at no, that point. He was just no. making money. Exactly, exactly, and but, uh, and, and that, that's the thing too. Like I, with Batman Begins, like one of the things that like, it's it's weird because it seemed like every time one of the movies came out, I was going through an extremely stressful or kind of like dark period of my life. Mm-hmm. And Batman Begins was one of those movies that kind of instilled hope in me when I felt like my situation was hopeless. Like that fucking scene, I still think this is obviously my opinion, so I don't expect everybody to agree. But I think the best mentorship scene ever is me and Ace quote this fucking line every day since like the gospel. But when they're out sword fighting on the ice and, um, you know, Ra's al Ghul says to, to Bruce Wayne, he was like, your parents' death was not your fault. And then he looks at him, he's like, it was your father's. And then he was like, and then you just see Christian Bale get so pissed off. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fuck you up. And then like, he's still trying, but Liam Neeson's still straight fucking him up. Cause you know, he's not the Bruce Wayne, the Batman yet. Yep. Well, he's like, telling him to not fight with anger, <clears throat> fight with your, you know, brain. Ex- exactly. And, um, He'd said, and then he goes, like, anger doesn't change the fact that your parents failed to act. And he was like, the man had a gun. He was like, would that stop you? It's like, I've had training. He was like, and then the greatest line ever is, your training is nothing. Will is everything. The will to act. That fucking shit is going to be tattooed on me. That's, yeah. how, that's how, like, I don't know what it is about that line, but it was so profound to me at the time when I heard it, and it still sticks with me to this day. And I was like... He's the best mentor ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so funny how quotable this whole trilogy is. It really is. I'm sure you have your favorite quote from there. What's your like favorite totally. quote from this whole trilogy? Oh, God. there's Not to put you on the spot, but... Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but like it's always the one that just pops into my head first. I was wondering what would break first. Your mind? Oh, your, your body, and he just snaps him <laughs> yeah. in half like it's nothing. Like that's great. And mine is the Joker's, which is uh, the thing about chaos is it's fair. Yeah, I yeah. have the chaos star tattooed on my back because of like that line alone. I see. Well, it's funny. I think all of us have individual quotes from that trilogy that kind of mean something they just to resonate us. with you yeah. and i love that christopher nolan was able to do that like brings bring you into the movie so personal oh god yeah because like some of the dialogue is some of the greatest written dialogue i've ever ever heard like yeah. i think it's the best work christopher nolan's done personally yeah, I, I mean i love i know there's people out there that love some of his other work but... yeah i mean i i mean i saw memento actually first but i Mm -hmm. saw it a few years after it came out and then i saw insomnia in the theater so and then like it was like one of those things like yeah i I, I like christopher nolan and then when i found out he was doing batman i'm like hey this this could be good you know like so i was kind of familiar with him Mm. you know before it came out you know i never really thought of movies and directors (laughs) this is like years ago like uh, before I was even 21, but I knew I liked movies, but I never paired them with their directors. Yeah. And you're the one that did that for me. You realize some of my favorite movies are directed by the same guy, and that yeah. was Christopher Nolan. You're like, yeah, Christopher Nolan. I'm like, shit. 
What I, I guess I, love I do is, love him. Yeah. <laughs> what I love is when I when I watch when I've seen a movie a bunch of times and I didn't know who directed it and somebody tells me and I just like you know what if you, you didn't tell me that but I could have I could have swore that guy did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because oh, they, absolutely. They have their style. style. Yeah. Yeah. Because director some, has that. Yeah. Because sometimes they have like certain fingerprints even like for example even though Zack Snyder directed Man of Steel but you know Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan had his fingerprints all yeah. over that movie it was because, such mm-hmm. a great origin it really was telling like, Superman <clears throat> oh man and, and people shit on Man of Steel so much like I thought Man of Steel was like the Batman Begins of Superman. Well, that's know? what they were trying to go for. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like even carry on that gritty realism. S- some of those shots were straight Batman Begins. Like mm-hmm. you know, especially like when you see um, Clark Kent um, hitchhiking and he's got the beard. It immediately made me think of Bruce Wayne yeah. out and like fighting criminals. Yeah, and, fighting yeah. criminals and stuff like that. Which mm-hmm. another one of my favorite lines. Um, from Batman Begins is because it just kind of established how much of a badass Bruce Wayne was, but like that scary looking Japanese guy that comes up to him, he was like, you're in hell, little man. And then like, he looks at his food and he's like, you think you can kill me before breakfast? And then then, like, he was like, and I am the devil. And he just like headbutts Christian Bale. And then Christian Bale gets back up. It was like his Kurt Russell moment. And he's like, you're not the devil your practice like it's like oh my god like how do you yeah. not get chills from like like that's such a badass thing to say if i was a badass i would say that to somebody yeah, right. before i kicked you just ass. have that in your back pocket for one yeah. day <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> please somebody say before they whip my ass that they're the devil <laughs> just so i could like have a counter punch and, and say that line yeah. <laughs> So you don't really care for the dark, the Batman Begins, do you, Nick? It's it's not that, and you know what we were just talking about, Killian Murphy and how great he is and other things. Maybe if you got another chance to do it, I just, his Scarecrow, I think that's why it's my least favorite because that's the only one where the villain, you know what I mean, doesn't doesn't stand out more to me. I think, you know, I kind of see what you're saying. Because, you know, this is also, like, I've noticed this discussion is not anything what I was expecting it to be. And we're all just kind of judging it fairly. Yeah. And I, I, I can see things from other people's point of view, too. And I think almost in a way, Tom Wilkinson's uh, Valcone character kind of steals like it away too. from. Yeah. And yeah. I think he kind of yeah, takes when they're, away. When, yeah. they're, uh, when they're in the bar, they're yes. in the booth. Like, that's one of the. You got enough, kid, or something. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. It was like, <laughs> you got spirit, kid. I'll give you that. No, More than your father, anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. so great. <laughs> that's good and, shit, you know, a lot dude. of people kind of shit on that. It's like, oh, well, Tom Wilkinson couldn't have played any more stereotypical gangster. I'm like, well, he did a damn good job of it. Yeah, like, he did what he was supposed to exactly. do. Exactly. Like, he played a better mob boss than Eric Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, even yeah, though yeah. he was good, but yeah, Tom yeah. Wilkinson was definitely better. Like, Fall like this, no way it would kill me. Yeah, Kelly oh. got it. Oh, it's it so me. great. Yeah, I, I love though when he says, um, like when he says to to Christian Bale to kind of piss him off after that scene. But he was like, he uh, was like, uh, yeah, you got spirit, kid. I'll give you that more than your dad's anyway. You know, Joe Chill told me when he was in the cell, he begged. Like a dog. <laughs> like, like, oh man, I'm like, oh dude, you know Christian Bale wanted to fuck him up, man. Like, or Bruce Wayne wanted to fuck him up. Like, you felt that. Mm-hmm. And then, like, um, and then when you see him kind of go on that journey, which that's another thing that's really cool about Batman Begins, is it's the first live action Batman film to give a definitive origin story on Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. Mm -hmm. Because even in the, I don't know if it's this way now since it's come out, but in the comic books at the time, they never kind of gave Bruce Wayne a definitive origin story. Like, because they said there's a seven year gap Mm -hmm. before he became Batman and David S. Goyer, the writer and producer of the film, you know, told Christopher Nolan he wants to tell that story because he yeah. doesn't feel like it's ever been told before. Like, yeah. that's cool. And what I loved about Batman Begins is purely the ambitiousness of it, too, because, like, 
he took a big risk by like, you know, he could have played it safe and put the Joker or Two Face or somebody familiar as a villain in the first yeah. movie. And he's like, no, I'm going for fucking Raza Ghoul. I'm even going to give you some fucking deep cut villains like fucking Valcone and stuff like that. And you only know of him if you read like the long Halloween mm-hmm. or Batman Year One and stuff like that. But for I bet, a- yeah, that's, that might be another reason why I didn't like like it's my least favorite is because it had the potential to me. Because if Scarecrow would have been a little bit better, that's what I said. It could have been the best one. Because like you said, there are parts in it that are very quotable. Yeah. And like you said, it, it, it took a different it took a different route with the origin. Yeah. It's not just they get shot, boom, he's Batman. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Like, like, and the other thing is, too, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, Ra's al Ghul's the villain. But it's like, I don't give a shit, dude. He's fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. He's so badass. Like, he's got so many great lines. Like, another one of my favorite lines from him was uh, when he first gets introduced to his character. And he comes in as like, my name's Madeleine Ducard. And, and, you know, like... We all know it's fucking Raza Ghoul. Look at it. Yeah. Look at him. It's Raza Ghoul. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It was no who surprise. The fuck is Ducard? <laughs> yeah, it's like... I have. I have a confession to make. Oh yeah. So... I bandwagoned on this trilogy. Really? So here's the story. I, whenever the Dark Knight was about <clears throat> to come out, I realized uh, <clears throat> Heath Ledger lost his life for doing this Joker, and that really piqued my interest. Yeah, in that's d- why it's the best. <laughs> in watching this movie, and I'm like, man, I have to watch it. This dude like lost his life. Yeah. You know, in the midst of doing this role kind of thing. And I'm like, I, I kind of knew about that. I grew up watching the cartoons. Yeah. Didn't really read comics. Comics was never my thing as a kid. So I'm like, I know a little bit about Batman. Let me go watch this. I loved it so fucking much. I was like, this is one of the greatest movies I've ever oh, seen yeah. in theaters. And yeah. then I went back to watch Batman Begins. It came out when we were in high school, right? Yeah, uh, it came out in 2005 because I was 21 when, when oh, Batman yeah. Begins came. So you were still, like, because we're only, there's only like a few years I think I heard about it in high school. Probably, And then it came yeah. out afterwards. And then, um... <clears throat> Because in high school, I heard about it, but I'm like, that's stupid. They showed me like the Tumblr. I'm like, that's not the Batmobile. A that's lot stupid. of people felt that way, too. So I didn't bother with it. I'm <laughs> like, oh, well. Badass it was. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then I went back to watch Batman Begins after The Dark Knight, and I'm like, I didn't know who Ra's al Ghul was because I didn't really read the comics, and he's not that prevalent in the cartoons. Oh, yeah. I had very little knowledge on him myself. I knew who he the was. The only thing I was disappointed about when I saw Ra's al Ghul was going to be in it is they didn't give him the white wings. Oh, in yeah. The animated series. Because, like, even his his uh, beard. They you know, got like the, the goatee they, that's perfect. That's what I'm saying. The yeah. was perfect. Like, the, his look, other than that he was missing the weather, t- the feather. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the white. That's right. That's right. But, so I was just saying, yeah. so I think a lot of people went into it not knowing the characters. Like you said, Raza yeah. Ghoul's a deep cut. Yeah, so. he, he really is. Like, I mean, Scarecrow was uh, definitely more popular out of the two, yeah, you know, the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, I mean, but but then you got Raza Ghoul and you got Valcone. And I don't think a lot of people, including myself, because I read the Batman comics, but I didn't really start reading them like legitimately on, mm-hmm. on more frequently until maybe a couple of years before Batman Begins came out because I read Batman Hush yeah, and stuff great. like oh it's so great Love like my, my girl just you know got just me did the animated series for that I or yeah, yeah I was just gonna I say I was it. just gonna say my girl just bought oh, the uh, the cartoon for it like for me on Blu-ray so we're gonna read the comic book again to familiarize ourselves with it before we watch the, the, the cartoon because yeah. I don't think it's the best Batman story <clears throat> But is definitely the most beautifully drawn. It really, Jim it's Lee one of my is favorite. one of the greatest, yes, like comic book artists we've ever had. I agree. L- like he, yeah, he's he's and, and like um, but I had found out like the the stuff that Christopher Nolan was inspired by the comic books was like the Long Halloween, the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One. I always knew those were like the more prominent ones that inspired him uh, for Frank the Miller. for the trilogy yeah oh god so do i his daredevil runs fucking great uh, too. i was mm-hmm. just about to yeah, say that, that but that's a that's a that discussion for ago. another time like yeah. like if we talk about daredevil or something <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> but like um and you actually turned me on to that by the way yeah. like um uh, you man without fear yeah like it, it, yeah. I, I liked daredevil but because of him bringing me that Frank Miller run, and I'm like, how the fuck do I not know this? Like, how did I not know this? Like, I'm reading way too much Punisher. Because <laughs> like, it's so damn good. It is. Like, because when Garth Ennis came on board, man, like, 
But anyway, that's another conversation for another day too. But yeah. like, um, but yeah, like, and I read that and I'm like, this guy's fucking amazing. And I'm pretty sure you lended the dark Knight returns to me. I think. No, it wasn't me. No, I that it. was Ace. That was Ace. Um, like, yeah, you lent me all the Daredevil stuff, and I went from liking Daredevil to loving Daredevil. Like, yeah. he instantly became in, like, my top five favorite Marvel characters after that run that I read. Yeah. So, like, we always kind of, like, in, like we always kind of turned each other on to a lot of different stuff. Right? Yeah, because I wasn't huge on Punisher. Like I liked the the movies that came out, but you're like those movies don't do him justice. Repeat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like, true. Oh, shit. <laughs> out of the two movies, though, which one do you like more, the original or Warzone? Oh man, you know it's funny. Like so you're actually don't... one of the people that actually likes the the first Warzone? Punisher movie, the one before Warzone. Oh, uh, talking about the 2004 one. Yeah. Well. That wasn't the, uh, always the case because uh-huh. at one point in time, like, because I was such a diehard Punisher fan, I was mm. that I was the annoying comic book purist. Oh, yep. you yep. know, like at one point in time where it was like, nope, Frank Castle wasn't an ex FBI agent, you fucking idiots. Why did you put that in there? <laughs> yeah. You know, like he was just an ex Marine. Why is that so hard for you people to do? You know, like, um, all those little things that I nitpicked just drove me nuts. And then, like, I liked it. I hated it. I liked it. I hated it. And I would go back and forth. So now I like it. You know, it's like I can appreciate it for a great action movie. Even, you know, it's like if I don't look at it like because Thomas Jane really was a good Frank Castle. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I think that's a part of it I latched on to. Yeah. He did such a good job he's, with the character. He stole the show from John Travolta. Like yeah. good you know, like I thought I thought John Travolta was a better villain than that movie. I yeah. you know, the thing that didn't make any sense to me though about that is like, why didn't you just make him Jigsaw? Who the fuck is Howard saying? Oh yeah, that's right. He doesn't exist because he's not in the Punisher Ever. comics at yeah. all. And it's like and and it was just some of their choices didn't make any sense to me. Like Okay, so you're going to have this Howard Saint Hollywood created villain, but then you're going to put the Russian from the Garth right. Ennis run in there. Yeah. And then like the some of the comic book characters that they chose like Spacker Dave, um uh Bumbo and and the the waitress chick. Yeah. Like really like that those are the 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 people from the source material that you just dis- I mean not saying that they're not memorable characters, but right. they're not like if you're thinking about doing a live action Punisher movie, it's just weird to me. Like some of the decisions these directors have like, yeah, let's put that guy in there. You know, he seems cool. He's got piercings. <laughs> like, <laughs> who cares? That's why I liked Wars. Well, that's why I liked Warzone a lot better. I agree. I thought Ray Stevenson looked. Oh my God. The like Tim the Bradstreet artwork yeah. is the slick. That's, back, that's Ray Stevenson vest, all day everything. long. And, and, and they put micro in it. Which yeah, I like. exactly. Yeah, and and you you remember I was fucking crazy over Warzone when oh, that yeah. came out. Like, and because it was one of those things, it was like the the purest comic porn movie for you, even if it wasn't put together perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like, just the fact that you got a guy that looks exactly like Frank castle from the tim bradstreet artwork on yeah. all the garth ennis punishers even had a fucking little homage to to tim bradstreet called the bradstreet hotel in mm. the movie which is really awesome um and then like you got jigsaw in there and i know a lot of people are like oh but he was like a rip off of the joker and i'm like i don't give a fuck <laughs> like they did such a great job on how jigsaw how looked, looked. Yeah. that just trumped like anything like, that that was horse skin oh yeah a those. little bit of what <laughs> yeah i love that <laughs> Let me talk so, with my doctor. <laughs> it, oh, but it was so great. Like I like Dominic West as Jigsaw because he yeah, was kind of like job. he was like, uh, oh, what, oh, like when him and Looney Bin Jim, like, yeah, and he yeah. was like, "What's wrong, Billy? What's wrong?" And he was like, "Look at my face. I look awful." <laughs> <laughs> every time I think I'm okay, I yeah, can't look t- at myself, and I look at myself, and I see my face, and he was like. You know what, brother? I'm going to kill Frank Castle, and then I'm going, I'm going to rip his heart out, and then every, and then he starts breaking all the windows. You never have to look at yourself when you're with me. 
or <laughs> smash his face in the windows. But it's so weird. Him. Like you kind of like like I love this duo. I know they're over the top, but mm-hmm. like you and kind Lee of Ben Jim's not even in. No, the it, comics, it's like... it, but isn't it funny how double standard we could be though? Because it's yeah. like. I guess because Looney Ben Jim isn't a main character like Howard Saint was in the 2004 version, yeah. so it's forgivable. Yeah. But like what Punisher Warzone did is it mixed and matched all of your favorite and popular Punisher runs and put them all together. Like Pitsy was. N- him and Jigsaw never knew each other. <laughs> like because right. Pitsy yeah. was from the Garth Ennis, the first Marvel Max run, and he was actually a henchman for Nikki Cabela, not Jigsaw. And then, like, uh, his, his, uh, I can't remember who played his son, but he was another character, but completely unrelated. There weren't family members or anything like that. I was like, whatever, you know, they're, they, they, they're trying more than fucking Jonathan Henslight did on Punisher 2004. So I'll accept it. And then we got the, uh, the Netflix Punisher, which blows all of that out of the water. I agree. Yeah, my guy (laughs) kills it on there. John John Bernthal. You know, it's funny, too. Five years ago, when I was at Read More Comics, mm-hmm. me and me and Ace were there. Which I know I keep saying Ace, so just for people that don't know, is MC now the director and writer of the Rock Bottom Creek trilogy that we've done. Uh, like we went in there and we were talking about potential Punishers and stuff like that. It's only been a couple of times in my life where fantasy casting has come true, mm-hmm. right. and because of at the time I was such a big fan of the first two seasons of the walking dead. And I was like, I was telling Scott at read I was like, I think John Bernthal should be Frank castle. Like me, me and Ace were so animate about like, that's should be the new punisher. He's perfect for the role. Just based off of him playing Shane yeah. and the walking dead, he's got everything you could ever want in a Frank castle. So fast forward a year later, they're like talking about who they're going to cast as Frank Castle and they're going to introduce him in the season two of Daredevil, which is God, also a great amazing. series. It, like, when and he runs the gauntlet in prison. Oh, Fuck, so dude, mi- so one of the amazing. greatest scenes ever cr- it, put to film. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And then like, and then I find out John Bernthal announced playing Frank Castle. I'm like, Holy dude, you called that shit. my brain almost exploded yeah. because I was like, that's one of the few times in my life where they casted somebody I really wanted for a specific role. You know, like the only other time that ever happened was the newest Predator film. Yeah. And I said, you know, after I saw Predators and I loved it and I'm like, they need to have Thomas Jane as the protagonist in the next Predator movie. He wasn't the main protagonist, but they cast him in the new Predator movie. I'm like, well, that's good enough. I'll take that. <laughs> he was actually one of the more entertaining Parts in yeah, that Baxley, movie, and I didn't think that movie was. A lot of people kind of Black kind of let me down with that one. I felt like that's but... that's what I hear from a lot of people. I kind of I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit different when it comes to that series because I went into it like, well, you know, I I love Predator too, and that's kind of a very minority kind of opinion because everybody's like, oh, I it doesn't it, have, but sh- I hate it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Danny like Glover Danny Glover. <laughs> I, I, him and Bill Paxton, you know, I mean, Bill Paxton, yeah. he, to me, even if the movie shit, Bill Paxton will find some kind of redeeming quality yeah. in it, you know, like, I, I mean, but like, I loved Predator too. It's probably still my favorite in the series. Oh like, no, that's, that's, I know that's crazy, but it's true. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> a lot of people say that the first but, like, Predator is the only one I that love, matters. I love the first Predator, but like, I've always kind of had an opposing, like, I guess it was maybe how I was brought up on those movies. I enjoyed the first one, but I didn't have a certain amount of expectations attached to it like a lot of other people did. So I went into Predator 2 just completely kind of cold, Mm -hmm. you know, not completely because I saw the first one. I liked it. But then, you know, I was such a massive fan of the Lethal Weapon series and I fucking love Danny Glover. Yeah. And I'm like. I, I remember just seeing the cover of Predator 2 and it was like the concrete jungle and it was in the green uh, font. Uh, the, the, the the font was green or whatever, you know, which as a, as a kid being my favorite color, I'm like, 
well, that's kind of cool too. It's my favorite color, and yeah. then, like I saw the movie. It was and just I'm like, like a perfect storm for you. Yeah, pretty much. You know, yeah, I I just loved it. Yeah. You know, I like, and I know like a lot of people have strong opinions about that movie. Yeah, but I I love it for for better or for worse. Yeah, I loved my, it. Me and my dad, we watched like tough guy films when we were when yeah. I was younger, and Arnold Schwarzenegger obviously is the staple of that genre. Oh yeah, we're all part of that generation. Yeah, too, so you know? Predator is just like. <sighs> My bread it, and butter. See, it's funny though because even though, like you, I was like both of you, I was a massive Schwarzenegger fan. But for me, that 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 standard was Terminator Two: Judgment Day. That yeah. was that was like where I was like, this man is the man. And Terminator Two, like, and I loved all the other movies I saw leading up to Terminator Two. But that was where T Two solidified my love for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Makes you know? sense. And it's my favorite movie of all time. That's never changed. I love Total all Recall. These I love Total Recall Free too. Titty Daily. That oh, changed a lot God, of things. It's so <laughs> great. That's so God, great. That, man. <laughs> Especially um, you know, me and me and my drummer would always quote the the two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> like we always quoted that line and our or that scene where Michael Ironside gets pissed off because he can't catch Quaid and yeah. he lets out that yell. But it's like, I know you're not supposed to laugh at it, but it was so goddamn funny to me because he's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so mad. It was like, you know, like if you're messing like electronic equipment, and it's not working for you. And it's like, that's the kind of yell I would let out if like my computer was fucking up. <laughs> you're, you're the one that really turned me on to those little nuances in movies. <laughs> Like uh, in Troll 2, like whenever he's like, <laughs> eggs! Ah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I never paid attention to those, but God, they're great. It's weird that like little nuances like that could play such a, even if some people don't realize it, but play a bigger role than you think. It's yeah. like in T2, one of the things that I always catch is when that little guy in the little truck comes up. It's after the, the SWAT uh, car gets knocked over and he's got to steal another truck and he's oh, yeah. like the old guy's like hello <laughs> and he's like and he comes up and he was like are you hurt and then like Arnold's like we need your truck and then, like they get in the car and then the tanker that the T-1000's yeah. driving comes up and you hear him go what the hell what <laughs> And like little things like that, you're like, why am I paying so much attention to that? But it's so goddamn funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's why James Cameron gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> it's just because of that guy, that small truck. <laughs> that, 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 that I'm just going to have to name this War with Cinema featuring or uh, a guest Mick Sawyer because this our whole conversation has nothing to do with the Dark Knight trilogy. <laughs> I was trying so hard to not veer off. We've been jumping off the fucking road. <laughs> like Every time lot. I try to line us back up, we'd get back off track. I, so. I had Greg's a... like the Dark Knight. Uh... <laughs> no, if you got to keep segueing, please do. <laughs> like, because I could talk about this trilogy for hours. Well, that's too. the thing. You're such an entertaining guy to listen to that. Like, I don't want to stop you. I'm like, he's on a roll, man. Like, let him go. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's why I was kind of shocked because when I was talking to Greg before I came in for the interview, I was like, I mean, hey, I, you know, I don't want to step on any toes, but, you know, I have this like because I, you know, I, I listen to the fun facts and stuff like that. I have a ridiculous amount of knowledge on fun facts where it's annoying in a way because it's like it's what we're all about. Here. <laughs> you know, and it's like, um, yeah, we're it's just going to be turned into war with cinema. Actually, it's just fun facts now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, um. I was thinking about, you know, when I was doing like research, but my research is in the computer of my brain. Yeah, you are an encyclopedia of a person when it comes to movies. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, yeah, even Ace had said I'm a savant. I'm yeah, a movie you are. savant. <laughs> like, like uh, you tell me things that I'm like, how do you remember that? That's what everybody says to me. Like, I've gotten that for over a decade now. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like, um, when they were talking about when they were casting for Batman Begins and they were talking about Jim Gordon. And they were saying, like, people that are in the running, it was before Gary Oldman got the part. Mm. One of them was Chris Cooper. And I'm like, I like Chris Cooper, but no. And then, like, another one was Dennis Quaid, which I've always felt like is the poor man's Kurt Russell. And then, like, then Kurt Russell was another person that was in the running. And I'm like, oh, my God, Kurt Russell and Gary Oldman fucking take my money. Because yeah, right? <laughs> like, I love both of them. And, like, 
But in the long run, I'm really glad Gary Oldman got yeah, the part. Yeah, I don't know if Kurt Russell would have been as good. I think he's got the mustache. Oh, he's just definitely got the yeah, mustache, you know, but, especially yeah. based off Tombstone. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I could totally see why. Yeah, but it, he would have stolen the show every time the, the camera mustache was on would him. Have Probably. Been it's like poor Christian Bale, man. He's getting his ass whipped by a fucking veteran. Right yeah. now, you know, by a mustache. Yes. <laughs> he would have, you know, that's actually one other person that I would accept for Jim Gordon. Another, like I, before you got here was talking about Brian Cranston because oh, yeah. it dawned on me when I was watching the first season of breaking bad back when it first came out. Cause one of my best friends, Steve Bowix, he is also the director of cinematography for our films with we massacre. And he was like, you got to watch Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is one of the greatest, you know, fucking shows ever. And I'm like, you know how like some people, some things you'll see are kind of overhyped. I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm not going to watch this until so- That's one me of you every day. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, I've underestimated so many of my favorite shows me and too. movies because of that, you know, mm. where it's like, it's overhyped. I'm going to think it sucks. And it's never the case. Almost nine times out of ten. I'm like. Like The Office, it's my favorite TV show of all time. And I'm like, oh, dude, Steve Carell's doing a TV show? Lame. Then I watch it a year after it came out. I'm like, oh, my God, it's like the fucking funniest show I've ever watched in my life. I think one show that's (laughs) overhyped that that didn't that wasn't that exception was American Horror Story. I think that's the most overrated show I've ever I seen. I could definitely see that because, I mean, it. I liked the fir- the first season. But and me and my me and my uh, fiance were trying to binge watch all of them. It's like, yeah. let's take this off the list. Yeah, like, exactly. Y- you know, it's like w- I watched the first season and I hated it. I'm like, I'm never coming back to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of one of those things. Like, ah, uh, yeah, it wasn't. That, I, but I loved the um because it's the same guy Ryan Murphy did the um American Crime Stories series now, and mm-hmm. he did the O.J. Simpson one. I don't know why that I why I love the O.J. Simpson American Crime Story thing so much, Everyone but I do. Does. I have not seen that. I it's, need to sit down. I really, watch that I shit really enjoyed it. Like, and, and I loved like. Obviously, they took some creative liberties because not everything's accurate. But like John Travolta plays Howard Shapiro, one of the lawyers for O.J. Simpson, mm-hmm. and there's just a scene in the movie where Nathan Lane plays the older lawyer. I forgot his name. But, um, like, he's basically, like, Howard Shapiro gets pissed off easily when he feels like he's embarrassed, and especially publicly. And then, like, he looks at Nathan Lane, he said something derogatory, and he was like, you fucking asshole! <laughs> like, he just <laughs> seems so mad about it. And I just love, I think that's probably my favorite John Travolta role. Because <laughs> he played so, he was so good at playing this insecure, but like he has this high lawyer position, but like he's really good at playing this kind of insecure character too. And like, it kind of made me like, I never, like, I never hated John Travolta, but I was just kind of like, oh, it's John Take Travolta. Him yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then. I that, love him as Chili Palmer. <laughs> Wait, which was Chili Palmer again? Um, get Shorty and be cool. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I got yeah, a movie like idea. Enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to talk about my favorite John Travolta because <laughs> was it Saturday Night Fever? <laughs> Grease. That would be not as bad as what his actual favorite is. What is it, Grease? No way, really? I was joking. <laughs> Don't tell me more, all right? Don't tell me more. Hey, you know what? One of my favorite actors of all time, Michael Bean, was in the second Grease movie. He didn't oh, have he a really? big, big part in it. I haven't seen it. I had no idea. I'm like, wait, Kyle Reese from The Terminator was in fucking Grease 2? <laughs> <Like that. laughs> all right, let me defend myself. Okay. When I was in uh, uh, grade school, I went to a daycare, right? And mostly girls. That was like me and one other boy. Yeah. And all the girls, this is back when Greece was like blowing up. And that's all the girls wanted to play because we had movie night, but they only wanted to play Greece. So I had to watch Greece literally every day for almost a whole school year. <laughs> and as expected, I hated it. I'm like, God, why do we have to watch this all the time? But Stockholm Syndrome, like we always say, just set in and I started <laughs> yeah. to like Grease. And in my adulthood, I got these like inklings to like watch Grease randomly. I'm like, why do I want to watch Grease? That's so, so at least, call your wife Sandy. So at least once a year, I actually do watch Grease all the way through. You know, it's funny, like 
it's kind of like you know how when we're in high school these <laughs> movies that they try to make us watch most of the time you're like no it's because school recommended it so it sucks by default yeah but then there was glory which i happened to have seen that movie before they i you know i got to middle school obviously and i love carrie elways and matthew broderick that was the I was first about to say, it has a lot of big time it really does before they took off it, it yeah. had a great Denzel, score morgan yeah freeman. morgan freeman um and i just remember um like i really love that movie even as a kid which is strange because that movie's fucking depressing it but really like is. It, it, but it, like that was one of those few exceptions in school that i liked and then there was another one that was like this 12 tv miniseries called centennial mm. and i love that too like it, like i i've had this hankering to want to watch it lately for like the last like man centennial man that was a great movie like and like and, and and also like I remember I think Donald Pleasance had a, a part in one of them where he played this crazy like in case people don't know who I'm talking about, so I should specify this. Donald Pleasance played Dr. Loomis in the original Halloween movies. Mm. And you can't and, like, have a conversation without talking about Dr. <laughs> Loomis, I can know, you? I know. <laughs> of course there's going to be some Donald Pleasant segue, even if it's a small one. <laughs> like, but uh he played this crazy like like backwoods countryman that was trying to rape this woman and I'm like I didn't notice it first until the camera got close. Mm-hmm. But you know how like certain actors they have an unmistakable voice I'm like wait, oh, yeah. why does that sound familiar? And I've heard Donald Pleasant's yell so much in the Halloween movies. It was kind of like that voice sounds very familiar. And then I look and I'm like, I could be wrong. It might not be Centennial, but I think that's what it was because I was in school watching it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Dr. Lewis. That was all I could think of the entire time. <laughs> had to come home and tell my mom, I saw Dr. Lewis today. <laughs> she had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but Dr. Lewis is your, like, favorite character, he, he's, like, hands down. Yeah, he's he's my favorite fictional character. So how long have you liked him? Because I didn't uh, realize you've liked him since, like, birth. God, yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was kind of like, okay, is you know how, like, when you watch a movie that terrifies you as a kid, but you have that one protagonist that you can latch on to, like, oh, man, this guy's not afraid of shit. And he's going, he's, it's... It's kind of like I how, you. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has, you know, yours is way more normal in comparison yeah. to me. But like, you know, it's kind of like when you watch a Schwarzenegger flick, and but yeah. you put him or like or Chuck Norris in the Delta Force movies, and they give you that big nasty villain, and then you're like, oh, Chuck Norris is gonna take it to this guy, you know, and I I'm latching onto him just because he's the good guy, yeah, you know, and then like, but that was kind of like Doctor Loomis. And especially like, you know, the first movie, the great, you know, one of the greatest lines ever. It's actually my least favorite. But when he's going in and talking about how I saw the six year old boy and had this blank, emotionless face, you know, and the blackest eyes or whatever. But for me, it was actually Halloween, two, where I was like, this guy's got a badass pistol. It's a Smith and Wesson. <laughs> and then like on top of it, like he doesn't give a shit about what the cops think. He's still carrying a gun. And not to mention the fact he's one step ahead. And he was like, Oh, by the way, I got a permit for this. <laughs> you know, and then, like, and then in the second movie, he says one of my all time favorite lines ever. And I think you remember my old cell phone voicemail was this line when you would call me, but it was Dr. Loomis in the back of the car in the second one where the U.S. Marshal picks him up and they're going to back to Smith's Grove or whatever. And he was talking about how, you know, uh, he was like, Halloween isn't, you know, Sam Hain isn't ghosts, goblins and witches. It's the unconscious mind. We all fear the darkness inside ourselves. And I'm like, this guy's fucking amazing. He's the guy. <laughs> like, not Let's only see. is he a badass, but he's got some of the greatest dialogue I've ever heard. And I think, at an early age, though, you know, being so passionate about movies, dialogue was always something that kind of like, you know, brought me into a movie. It was what it's like what, Kevin Smith's one of my favorite directors. Exactly. Same here. I, I love Kevin Smith and he had a big influence on 
you know, our production crew, that and the Dark Knight trilogy yeah. had a big influence on us, too. That's what I was telling too. Greg when we were, when he said, when he mentioned that you were going to come on here. I said, that's why I think it's so cool about what they do. I said, yeah. not necessarily, because I'm, you can ask him, I'm not a big horror movie guy or anything yeah. like that, but I said, just the fact that they go and they make their own movies, I said, because that's some Kevin Smith shit. Yeah. He took 10 grand and went and made Clerks. Exactly. And he did something that he, he knew about he was a clerk at a, gro- at a yeah, convenience store. Absolutely. I just thought that was really cool. He had that he, do that. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Like I, well and also because and it's funny because he was a bigger inspiration on us than anybody would have ever known because one of the things Kevin Smith said that really resonated with me is when they're talking about if you're writing a story or if you're writing a movie, he'd said, write what you know. Mm-hmm. And it's the most simplest right. thing. And it's almost the most common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exa- but then you think about it, like, oh, shit. That, but he's right, though. Like, yeah, you, you would think it's something that's obvious, but that just stuck with us. And that's kind of what we did throughout the Rock Bottom Creek trilogy. We just put out our film, King James. Yeah, I was just about to say, congratulations oh, on that. Oh, thank you. I've like, uh, seen it on Instagram. It is like i think it's the best film we've ever done like you know how like when me and you really started hanging out consistently we always talked about crime dramas a lot yeah. we always talked about like michael mann mm. and stuff like that and uh you know martin scorsese and shit like that and i was such a big fan of training day it's still to this day, one of my all-time favorite movies. Great movie. Yeah. It, oh, God. Some of the greatest dialogue ever. And, uh, like, um, I always wanted to play that type of cop, you know, in a movie. Because, yeah, I play Sheriff Ringo in the Rock Bottom Creek movies. And before, I was kind of self-conscious. I'm like, man, I'm not even, like, the big time. And I'm already getting typecasted as a cop. But then another <laughs> part of my ego is like... Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's kind of like Michael Bean, you know, like he plays a soldier or a cop in almost everything he's in, you know, and then like, <laughs> exactly, you know, like, um, so, but I always wanted to be in one of those gritty type crime dramas. And that's what I love is I got to play a character that was so different from Ringo. Mm-hmm. And I was so like ridiculously self-conscious about it when we were shooting that movie Everybody on set was telling me, "Is like you completely disappeared in that role. Like none of us think of Sheriff Ringo at all." And then Ace had told me something that like really jacked my fucking ego to like a twelve or eleven. He was like, "You know, you really have that Christian Bale, John Connorish type of quality to your character <laughs> because you know how like when he would narrate stuff in and Terminator Salvation and like." And how he kind of had that still kind of rough kind of voice, borderline Batman voice, but not exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of subconsciously where I pulled from. And like, especially like in the trailer for the movie where it was like, uh, you know, finally I tracked this motherfucker down. And it's like, oh shit, that's, that's kind of Christian Bale, a little yeah. bit, you know, like, but I mean, you can't hide your inspirations, you know, like right. Christian Bale and Gary Oldman have, I mean, you've you known for years that I've had a hard on for those guys and Guy Pierce. I can't forget Guy Pierce and mm-hmm. Kurt Russell's the only one that's not British, but like him as well. But the like, thing is, pulling from those inspirations, but making it your own. Yeah, like exactly. using them as your base, but then like growing from there. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, and it's true because some of these things are kind of like you know how subconsciously you'll be inspired by something, but you don't realize it. Like when you're doing something. It's like say you're watch you're doing your podcast and you're not trying to do like a Joe Rogan experience thing, mm-hmm. but then you realize you kind of subconsciously do some things, like even if the way your show is set up a little bit, yeah. it's like, oh shit. You know, I love this guy so much that like, you know, it's kind of coming out when I'm not even realizing it. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the case with the Sheriff Ringo character because uh the inspiration for that character was the one small part Billy Bob Thornton had in Tombstone, that Johnny Tyler guy. That's what know. I love about Tombstone. Every part of that movie is <clears throat> yeah. great. Oh, my God. Nobody yeah. had a little part no, in No, and it's yeah. one of those movies, too, where every character is memorable. It's like Aliens. There's not one character that stands out. Almost every single one of them does. And yeah. even Billy Bob Thornton's small part, like when he was like, God damn it, Jumer, I told you about getting that damn cigar in my face. Like playing you with know? my sister's kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's like babysitting my sister's kid. 
did, you nerve-wracking sons of bitches. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was the one character that just had the biggest influence on Sheriff Ringo. And mm-hmm. like at Rock Bottom Creek, he's irritable all the time. And that's Johnny Tyler. Like that motherfucker was the most irritable guy on the face of the planet, you know? Like yeah. And everybody was like, oh, so it was like, you know, when I say Billy Bob Thornton, a lot of people immediately go to Bad Santa. And I'm like, no, it was Tombstone. Yeah. Like, you know, like, because you know how, like, with some actors, they're like, they'll say they pulled from a place. And sometimes just like, you're so fucking pretentious. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you just had to be so different. And you had to pick a kid. You know, I had to pick from a place that was so different because you didn't want to sound like anybody else. And then it's like, I kind of was like insecure telling people that at first because i'm like man i hope they're not thinking i'm just saying that because (laughs) you know i want to be different (laughs) like that's not real like it legitimately was the reason because growing up with tombstone he had such a massive like his part was so memorable to me it just resonated exactly it's just i mean it's like you know gary oldman is drexel and and true romance you know, Love like, that scene. Oh man. my god. Yeah. It's my like, favorite Gary Oldman scene of all time. Oh, it's so like, great. It's so great. Like that that line where he was must like have thought it was white boy, yeah. Charlie. Nah, it ain't white it boy. It ain't, is it? <laughs> yeah, I love when he was like, I'm gonna keep love a boy here entertained. <laughs> Clarence Hurley. <laughs> It's oh, so man. great. He kills that movie. Uh, like, uh, oh, one of my other favorite lines, I think you remember this, but Samuel L. Jackson had with Gary oh, Oldman. Yeah. He was like, he was like, wait, you t- he he says he don't like to eat pussy. And he well, was like, say he don't eat pussy. <laughs> he's like, motherfucker, I ate a pussy, I ate the butt, butt, I ate every motherfucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what's wrong with you? He said, you smoke enough sherm, you be doing anything. <laughs> oh, they're sucking niggas dicks. dicks. <laughs> That's so Dude. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Such a small part in the movie, but I turned it off after that. Like, <laughs> oh, it got better. Like, like oh no, it gets better. But I was just saying, like, that's how great it is. Like, it really is. Like, even though it was directed by Tony Scott, but you can tell Tarantino it's had his fingerprints. in Tarantino. Oh, it really definitely. Is. Yeah. Like the dialogue is Tarantino all day long. Well, he wrote it. So. Yeah, that's what the I'm crazy saying. thing like, about it is it's still not the best part in the movie because I think Dennis. Hopper scene is, is oh the best. Christopher Walken yes oh, those two together in that it's, one moment in cinema that's one of those movies that again like Tombstone and Aliens there's so many characters in there that are so memorable like even Brad Pitt like when he when he's like uh, <laughs> when he comes in there and he's like the the mafia guys are coming in there and they're asking him like where he uh, where Clarence is and stuff like that yeah. he's like, um, he's at the um the s- Safari Inn. The Safari Inn. Hey, you want to smoke a bowl? <laughs> it's so great. Oh yeah, kind of send me, man. <laughs> yeah, don't kind of, don't you. fucking kind of send me, man. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> this is such a great movie. Like, Gandalf did I introduce theme. you to that too? You or? did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, such a great movie. Like, well, I mean, you know it. Good friends have to introduce each other to the good shit. Yeah. I try to introduce him to great movies, but he just shoots them down. I'd rather you just shoot me. <laughs> Some of the fucking shit you've given me, man. That's why it's war with cinema. Because yeah. I think he does it on fucking purpose. Yeah, because if Because sometimes when I give him a movie, I'm like, I genuinely, you'll like this, Greg. And he'll just be like, no, it was terrible. Why do you, what? Uh, it was kind of funny, too, because the, the, the episode where you guys did Vacation 2015, I and I kind of laughed, and, like, I, I could hear, like, you were, like, kind of bummed in your voice, like, <laughs> fuck, man, like, I thought I was going to dig it. <laughs> I really thought he would enjoy it, man. It's just stupid funny, like. I, but I know that feeling, though, you know, like when you turn somebody on to something, you're like, this is guaranteed. They like and then like yep. they pull the curveball. And then a part of you is like, are you just fucking disagreeing for the sake of yeah. disagreeing? Fuck you. <laughs> you get so <laughs> mad sometimes. And that's why we do this. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why I like this so much is because we for some reason, we genuinely don't like the same movies. Like I, I was telling you before we started recording, I gave him real genius. I genuinely thought he was going to enjoy it. Yeah, but he's like, I didn't care for it we i mean like i said if i had seen it when i was younger it could have been one of those nostalgic like, yeah you know what i mean but I, you know i don't know like i think i never thought about that like mm-hmm. if i had seen it later on 
if I'd feel the same way, but more than likely, I probably still would have enjoyed it, yeah. you know, because I didn't hate it, y- like y- I said. But, but then again, there's some movies that came out during that period that I didn't see until later on, and I didn't really like that much, you know. It's like, uh, I, it's okay. Like, I know a lot of people, you know, like fucking St. Elmo's Fire or some shit. Like, the, the shit with the brat pack. You know, the, I love The Breakfast Club, but then there's some of the other movies they do. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know about that. Like, yeah. I don't understand the hype behind that one, you know? But, but then again, you know, like, it's just, I think it's just all kind of like, I, I guess it all depends on where you're at at the time, you know, That's where true. you're at emotionally or, you know, whatever, when you see certain movies. Like, you know, some people like when Last Action Hero came out, you know, it came out That's the same year example. Jurassic Park came out. Fucking people hated Last Action Hero. Like it made a shitload of money in the box office, too. But it's like but at that time, it's, like, it's a critical failure. You I think know? people like, I think people got pissed off because it showed how <laughs> how formulaic action movies i think so too i think they were being made fun of for making fun of it yeah because i tell i I remember i was telling you this too i was like it was the scream of action movies yeah it it was making fun of action movies like that was the whole point exactly and and i think a lot of people miss the point on that like that's why people like us laughed at it because we got all the tropes and they did it in a more clever way than a lot of other spoof action movies that came out because some of them were too on the nose mm-hmm. in some ways but even though last action hero did it things that were on the nose but they did it in such a clever way like oh yeah like of course like where the black cop gets blown up in the tree and they even play the lethal weapon music in the background he was like two days till retirement and then he dies <laughs> it's like ah nice okay i get it murtaugh reference from lethal weapon you know like and, and then like uh you know one of the other things i thought was funny because this is totally like typical 80s action movies and these kind of dialogues but remember before they go into the house and it blows up where it's Jack's favorite second cousin and uh, he comes in there and he was like he was like, this doesn't look like a drug house to me. He was like, what do you want the guys doing? All running around, throwing cocaine at each other, dancing on the wall? Like, just kick the door in. Like, it's like, that's totally another 80s action trope. Yeah. That's just yep. that dialogue all day long. And I love the uh, the bad guy and his fake eyeballs. Oh, and like, Benedict. there were so many like yeah. silly ones. Like, if you don't pick up on that being a comedy, then I don't know. I know, what right? Like, you. there's so many funny things in there that mm-hmm. like. It's. It, I'm glad. You have a cartoon partner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he was like, Red and I Red. love how they're so oblivious. Like, because to them, like, this is our world. Like, why are you so shocked by this? But then, like, Danny is like the kid that's like trying to be rational in an irrational world. And it, like, yeah, the cartoon is like. And, oh yeah, I love that lie too because he was like a cartoon cop just walked into the police station. He's like, he'll do it again in the morning. <laughs> it's like, what's your point? God, I now I have that. to watch Last Action Hero. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then like they get the the police captain from the Forty Eight Hours movies. Yeah, and of course they have to have the stereotypical police captain. It's like you're blowing up the city. What's wrong with you? You're fucking everything up. I got some guy trying to run down my. Hershey Highway, <laughs> like all this shit, you know. It's like, and, and like, I love that movie, and that's what made it so brilliant because you know they were taking all those those eighties and even early nineties action tropes, mm-hmm. but they did it and, and delivered it in such a way, and it's like that it was just so clever. But it was like at the time though, when you're a kid. You're just kind of looking at the characters and how larger in life they are. You're mm-hmm. not thinking about like how great their lines were or their dialogue or how it was written until way later on. But at the time, you're like, damn, Tom Noonan is the Ripper? Man, that guy was scary looking. I call you it know? the Space Jam effect. Like, yeah. when I was a kid, I loved Space Jam. Exactly. It's the fucking Looney Tunes and Michael Jordan. It's the two greatest things ever. <laughs> exactly. Like, but now I watch that with my kids and I'm like, oh, damn, Michael couldn't. Was it the greatest actor, basketball player for no, sure? No, no, but you know what? There's something worse. It was that movie with Shaq. Fucking uh, oh, what Steel? was Sam? Yes, Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> that Shazam it was Kazam. 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 I think it, yeah, Came out yeah, of the it was yeah, Kazam. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny because yeah. it made me like you. One of you guys uh, referenced Aries Spears. Oh, and, I uh, yeah, I think it was you. Yeah, and like. I laughed because I thought about his Shaquille O'Neal impression on Mad TV. Where Co- he's like, Co- no. Co- my, name, my name's Shaquille O'Neal. 
uh, I'm a basketball player. <laughs> it's like he just plays him with this such monotone, like, yeah. and he, you know, he plays him like he's a complete idiot. <laughs> I told Phil, I told Kobe, give him the ball. I'm going to watch the dome. Yeah, that, he, he kills that. And here's another, like, great underrated comedy from the 90s is Celtic Pride. It's on his list. Is it's it on oh, his it's list, great. man? I th- I He'll think probably you will fucking like hate that. it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know because you got <sighs> Daniel Stern, Dan Aykroyd, and Damon Wayans. Mm-hmm. And there's a line in there that's so goddamn funny. It was um I'm not gonna go into like too much of it because you gotta watch it, but there's yeah. one line where uh one of the guys is actually a basketball player that's on Damon Wayans' team. Yeah. And it was like just feed me the rock. And he was like, thanks for the pep talk, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Her new bowl's begging your mom. My new bowl, your mom. <laughs> it's such a great movie. Well, that was original whitey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to watch that shit. It was yeah, such a great movie. Like, it really was. Like, You've never seen Dan Aykroyd so vulnerable either. He does, he does such a great job in that one. He really does. Like, and um, yeah, it's definitely a movie that I can't wait for you to see because, like, I think you will find the humor in it. I yeah. think that's going to be one of those picks from Nick where you'll be like, "Okay, that was actually pretty." Shit, decent. even my boy Jeff, uh, is it Jeff Ross? He even makes a cameo in that one. Oh yeah, but and, of course, uh, sir, I understand that that car is the only chance you getting laid. <laughs> yeah. But I'll be with you in a moment. He's like the dude is in the middle of a crime, and he's just sitting here talking to this oh, guy. Oh, that's so great! And then also uh, the the cameo by Larry Bird. Oh, and Larry fans Bird, like, like you make me sick. Yeah, he was like, you know what, fans like you make me sick. You love us when we're winning. You hate us when we're losing. Fans like these, you can have them. Because <laughs> they were pre- nah, see, like, You don't want to ruin it. Yeah, yeah, no more. We got to shut up. <laughs> so the Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great movie. Here we go. An hour and fifteen minutes in, and more of the Dark Knight. Probably, Sorry, <laughs> we probably talked about it about a whole fifteen minutes. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna label this one as It'd be interview easier with to make Nick a Sawyer. super cut of the actual Dark Knight talking. I would lose so much good content though. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But after rewatching the uh, Batman Begins, you know what I actually really appreciated that I didn't is the how he has to face like almost boss levels. That's he has true. to take down <laughs> Falcone, then he has to take down Scarecrow, and, and then, then he has to Ghul. face off on Ra's al Ghul. Doesn't like, even realize until towards the end of the movie. That... Exactly, and <clears throat> I never like I don't know why I never noticed that before. But mostly it's just good guy versus bad guy. But it's Batman versus all and, these and villains. And it's so great too. And you know what's funny though, so the, like. I got that movie spoiled for me before. Like, you remember the kids section where it would have the little Batman books or whatever? Mm. I don't know what possessed me. I was at Walmart, like, this is probably like a couple of weeks before the movie came out. And they put those books out. And it should have fucking said spoiler alert on the books because <laughs> I'm looking through it. You know, not thinking anything of it. And then I remember at the end, it was like, oh, look at that. Marley Ducard is Ra's al Ghul. I'm like, fuck, man. I didn't know it was shit. <laughs> like, I know who Ra's al Ghul is. I mean, I guess it's really not that big of a shocker. You look at Liam Neeson in yeah, the movie, and it's yeah, like, he's I got that, the fucking like, as Ra's al Ghul. As soon as I saw him standing on the ice, I'm like, that's Raz. <laughs> yeah, you're right. probably like, yeah. Dude. Yeah, when he says it in the later in the movie, you're like, I'm Ra's al Ghul. It's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess we were so desensitized by the Dark Knight because that was so clever and there was a lot of things you didn't see coming. And you're like, wow, I mean, I love Batman Begins, but it's surprisingly predictable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... I think, like I said, like it's not bad. It's the, the reason why is just like Heath Ledger just went so hard in the Dark Knight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. He's my favorite villain see, see... out of any movie ever. No, he was great. I, love him in that movie. I think the only thing that I've ever had a big debate about with that movie, and Greg knows because he's heard me go on so many tangents about it, is like the only thing that always got me mad about like 
people loving the dark knight though was all oh, the joker is the best thing about that movie now don't get me wrong i am not taking anything away from heath ledger as the joker he was fucking amazing yeah. but he is not the only good thing about that no movie. he's not no, That's, no, no, no. the like, story itself yeah is fucking amazing it, it's so many elements of that movie that make it good because i'm in the middle of writing my own story and i'm actually i actually started by using the dark knight as a reference yeah and the more i like break it apart i realize how fucking brilliant his yeah. writing is like oh Absolutely. my god how did he do that yeah I, I mean i mean don't get me wrong the dark knight has a couple of issues that for me but it doesn't break the movie for no. me i can still enjoy it exactly i mean it's kind of like you know in a way it's kind of like t2 the little um like little missteps they have in the movie like these are more or less mistakes but it's like when you see the t1000 in the helicopter shooting at Sarah Connor in the SWAT car. But when you see a scene and you see three arms controlling the, the, the helicopter and you see him reloading and you see another arm behind Robert Patrick holding up the joystick, but it's little things like that. But you know, well, one thing, that, that one thing that really bothers it. me is uh, in the dark Knight specifically is <sighs> Okay, so whenever they go into the room where the two cops are shot, one is called so-and-so Harvey and the other guy is so-and-so Dent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he takes the bullet out of the wall. He takes it back to the Batcave. He reconfigures it, the thumbprint, and that thumbprint leads him to the guy's apartment. Like, that's a stretch. Like, that's that's pretty convenient. You like, know what? I never thought about that before until you said it. Only because he's like, it's... This is the Joker, and he attracts crazy motherfuckers. Crazy you, motherfuckers that know that Batman would put that bullet back together. Exactly. Like, yeah, like very that, convenient. Do you, do you yeah. think also though maybe Christopher Nolan was like, no, they're not going to question that because it's Batman. Yeah, Batman really does everything right. <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought the first time. I thought I was stupid. I'm like, oh, I guess Batman is really that good that he can trace a fucking fingerprint off a bullet. My bad. Can't take a fingerprint off of a, st- of, of a bullet. It's just, a bullet. Just, That's his detective skills, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got a billion dollar bat computer. He can figure that shit out, no problem. <laughs> but he's got more like... money than Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Probably know. Does. It's just like that's one of the only parts that like really bothers me about the movie, but I have just like let it go. I'm like, whatever, yeah. it's a small issue. Yeah, I, I no, I get it. I, I think like I think my only gripe was what you know, what I was just saying is just like, you know, I would get so mad like when you would talk about great Batman movies. And you'd have those, you know, you'd have those fair weather fans. That's, you know, yeah. what we call them. It just drive you fucking nuts where they'd be like, oh, the best thing about it is the Joker. You know, and you're like, oh, God, fuck you. Yeah. Like, that is not the only A lot good... of people got Joker tattoos after this movie. Yeah, came oh, out. yeah. That, dude, that was our Eric Draven. <laughs> you realize that, right? Like, yeah. remember when The Crow came out? Yeah. How many motherfuckers dressed up like Eric Draven we were growing up as kids? That was for us growing up and being like in our mid 20s or, you know, early 20s or whatever and being nauseated by like, oh, my God, every fucking buddy's the Joker this yeah. year. And it was like that for the next four years or five years. Actually, still people are doing it. Yeah. The only <laughs> the only clever costume was a friend of ours where he dressed up as the uh, nurse joker oh for yeah yes yeah, like yeah. yeah that was the only person i thought that was clever about the thing i did too everyone I did, else because they actually went creative instead of just you know the the, the purple suit and the, that whole get up they actually went like no i'm gonna be the nurse joker i'm like yeah. see that's cool that's that's the way i like to think about things like mm-hmm. if you're gonna dress up like dr loomis even if you're not bald motherfucker you're gonna be bald for this costume yeah you're gonna put nair on your head <laughs> hey that won me a costume contest being uh oh it's uh Tra- travis bickle travis bickle i shaved my head and people yeah. looked at me like i don't know who travis bickle is but he shaved his head for this costume so i'm gonna give it to him <laughs> see that's what i'm saying yeah. like it, it, that's commitment right there like it is. The thing that made me so mad when I dressed up as Dr. Loomis back in 2012, mm-hmm. we're going to see Halloween in the Ebor Theater, and not one motherfucker got it. I'm wearing a tan trench coat, everything that you would know Loomis by. The only thing I didn't have was a fucking pistol, yeah. you know, and like I neared my hair. I, I had my <laughs> I had my goatee you know, stylized like his, like where he kind of has that devilish looking goatee everything I even had the crown can just... i can i be completely honest yes nobody cares about dr Lewis <laughs> except you 
That's no, that's not true. I'm I'm realizing. I thought that the Rob these... Zombie remakes were a lot better. Ugh, I hated those movies. <laughs> like... You told me how you felt about them. <laughs> I, just I'd throw that I out knew there. that was bait. <laughs> that was a, that was originally the what we were gonna do instead of the Dark Knight. That's but... it, yeah, it's, that's what you were telling me. Like. That, that I figured been... we'd have a lot more fun talking about the Dark Knight than yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean it's, it's, uh, it's not like it... we've talked about it either. We <laughs> just had a three-hour episode about other shit anyway. <laughs> Whatever. So. Great. Well, I mean, it's like um, when I saw, um, what was it? What, like with, with, but like with Halloween, though, the thing that kind of is shocking to me, I'm watching some of these reviewer sites, and I know I've always been very staunch about reviewers, but I started thinking about something you said to me back in the day. It's like, I only listen to these guys because I have more in common with them than mm-hmm. anything. That's the only reason why I watch their videos. Yeah. And even they'll say things that I disagree with, but like, well, most of the stuff they like, I'm into also. Yeah. There's this uh, one YouTube channel called We Watched a Movie, and these guys are really funny dudes, and they're just reviewing their favorite movies and stuff like that. And they got one of the guys named Jay that always dresses up like Dr. Loomis on mm-hmm. the show. And he's always doing Loomis lines like, God damn you, Michael! You know, stuff like that. And, like, um, you know, it was like, that's when I started realizing, like, holy shit, there is a whole niche audience that loved Dr. Loomis in the original Halloween Those are your movies. People, man. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> you knew really... there was a cult following for Troll 2, but you ain't know that. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's because I'm not a huge Dr. Loomis fan. I don't, I don't, I don't appeal to those people, and they don't appeal to me. Yeah. But give me a Troll Two fan, and we'll connect. Um, off the fucking but that's what the same thing made me mad is when I did Travis Bickle. I was at, um, I was at work. It was a work contest. Like we have hundreds of people that work there. Everyone walked by, and they're like, "Who is he?" One guy, old man, walks by, and he's like, "Taxi driver." I'm like, "Thank you." At least Thank you, you got one guy. I got one. <laughs> I, I got Old zero. Marty. Old Marty Scorsese. I got fucking zero. Like nobody noticed. Uh, even going up, like looking like a complete fucking idiot with nair on the top of my head to look bald, you know, to play Doctor Loomis. Not even a oh cool, you're Doctor Loomis. I'm going to see Halloween. You fucking asshole. How do you not know? It's like one of the most popular <laughs> horror films ever made. Yeah, and it's one of the most and, and it and is it defined a whole genre exactly. And it is one of the most memorable characters in the movie killers <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny though you know what really pisses me off there's a uh trick-or-treat website that's what it's called mm-hmm. and they specialize in costumes now these motherfuckers are making dr loomis costumes god damn it. i had to fucking make mine <laughs> i had to go to a goodwill find a tan trench coat that wasn't easy <laughs> you know how many of those i had to go to <laughs> It's like, you know, that's like, like, that's the typical gumshoe trench coat. Yeah. I was lucky when I did Travis Bickle because you had an army (laughs) jacket jacket that looked exactly like his. The the one that I called the John Connor jacket. (laughs) I called it the John Connor jacket for so long because remember Edward Furlong and two had that little like Vietnam jacket or whatever. Well, I guess you could also call it the Clarence Worley jacket too, because yep. he wore it in True Romance. But like, but yeah, that was to me. Of course, it had to be T two. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to make that reference and that connection. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but every time I looked at it, I'm like, taxi driver. Yeah, ever see? You know what? The military jacket, the Vietnam jacket, is it means something different to everybody. That's a big movie fan. Yeah, this is you true. Know? <laughs> you know, it's like for you, it's Travis Bickle. For me, it's John Connor. You know, I guess, I don't know, Nick, what would be yours? Clarence? <laughs> yeah, exactly. See? <laughs> uh, like, um... Besides, <clears throat> Floyd smoked the second page of the letter. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> it's like, Floyd, why didn't you use the last piece of toilet paper? <laughs> it's so great. It's fucking great. But anyway, back to the Dark Knight. <laughs> and, uh, do you have anything else to say about the Dark Knight? Like everyone's talked about the Dark Knight to nauseam. I don't even know what we can add to I the mean, conversation. Like, do you I, have anything? I mean, I know that I loved how bigger of a role Jim Gordon had yeah. in in there. I loved. Oh, I mean, I could talk about the the twist that I didn't see coming that almost ruined the fucking movie. Oh, right, for right, right. <laughs> like, 
I like actually we went to go see that in the theater no, together. No, we were fucking supposed to, but y'all guys motherfuckers didn't wait for me, so oh, I had to go to shit. the next showing and I sat beside gangbangers and some scared old oh, white lady. Oh shit, that's by sucks. myself. I didn't I could have sworn you went with us. We were us. supposed to go together, Fuck, but I didn't know. <laughs> but like yeah. Okay, so we went to go see the movie that was supposed to have Greg with us. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it will, he was there in spirit. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> but we went to go see it, and you know the scene in the movie where um, they're having the little parade for the mayor, and like that's where the Joker pops up or whatever, and he doesn't have his face paint on, and you know Jim Gordon gets shot. And I remember Ace telling me before we went to go see the movie, he's like, a major character dies. And then I thought about that. I'm like, fuck this movie. Are you fucking serious? Like, why would he do that to you? I don't know. It's fucking horrible. (laughs) (laughs) But like, I remember like, you know, Ace is like, just calm down. Like, don't fucking tell me to calm down. This movie's fucking ruined. Like, Yeah, you can't kill Jim Gordon. It's like killing Alfred. Yeah. You know, like you just don't do it. It's true. Michael <laughs> Caine did a great job. Oh too. my god, yeah. But like, but yeah, and then, you know, I I'm just sitting there like stewing the entire time, like, fucking piece of shit movie. <laughs> like So then and, when you seen Jim Gordon yeah, get shot, when, when, like I was so mad. I had like I call it the saw effect. Yeah. When I first saw Saw, and when Danny Glover gets killed. Uh, like you're thinking he like when you watch the movie you're thinking he's gonna have a comeback after he gets shot and nothing happens Mm -hmm. and like at the end of the movie you see jigsaw and fuck you people for spoilers this movie came out in 2004 if you didn't know this by now that's on you thank (laughs) you i keep trying to tell nick he like i had to do (laughs) well the only reason i say it is because like what about the people that maybe they're waiting on listening to us argue about it before they watch oh that's true well Well, now i feel like an asshole (laughs) no 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 spoilers galore like you just said if it's over 10 years old that's on you yeah yeah three is probably over 10 years old and yeah oh yeah it came out in 2007 yeah i didn't tell you to do a spoiler warning well i did just because (laughs) But it was one of those things where, you know, like, I'm sure you've all seen a movie where there's an actor that you really love and they get killed and you didn't expect it. And it Sean almost Bean ruins. Yeah. Fucking every time. Departed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, Can Sean Bean live to the e- end. Even Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman gets iced in a lot of his movies, yeah, yeah. you know, and like even when he's a character you like, you're like. Well, that's fucking bullshit. You know, they killed Gary Oldman. Looking I don't even know why I want to watch this movie anymore. <laughs> you know, like um, like Lance Hendrickson always being one of my favorite actors. And I know you know who he is because you've heard me talk about him so much. He played Bishop in Aliens, the mm-hmm. android. And, you know, a lot of people always talk about Sean Bean getting iced in movies a lot. But they never bring up Lance Hendrickson and they never bring up Michael Bean. Those guys get killed in almost every single movie they're in. Michael Bean got killed in Tombstone as Johnny Ringo, got killed as Kyle Reese, almost got killed in Hicks. If you consider Alien 3 as continuity, then he did die. But if he didn't, then that's a whole other fucking conversation. <laughs> but like, uh, you know, every movie, like Jade, every movie I've seen Michael Bean in, I don't think there's one movie I can think of where I, oh, Navy Seals, he survived in that. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Paxton, too. Bill Paxton's almost got killed in every movie he's in. Made it through Twister. He did make it through Twister. He did. You know, but (laughs) in the 90s and the 80s, it was a little steep for Bill Paxton to live through a movie at that time period. He didn't even make it through Weird Science. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I I look at it that way, but yeah. (laughs) He got killed in that one, too? Yeah. The little monster. Yeah, yeah. They blew him up or something, didn't they? (laughs) Oh, shit. He did did get iced. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, he was an asshole anyway. Whatever. Getting typecast to die. (laughs) So so what if he was if if it was his brother? Did you ever watch that show he was on HBO? That Big Love. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I watched some of it, and you know, get into it. it, I couldn't either. I love Bill Paxton, but there were some movies. Can't save it. uh, Yeah, like the only thing I thought was cool is like I can't remember who played Bill Paxton's brother on the show, Mm. but Michael Bean almost got that part, and. I was getting so mad because I went on this tangent with Steve a couple of weeks ago and I was reading the did you know section on IMDb and they were talking about all these roles that Michael Bean almost got. Mm -hmm. And one of them was 
he almost he was considered for the role of Jonathan Kent in Man of Steel. And I'm like, you just had to give it to fucking Kevin Costner, didn't you? Because it's not like Kevin Costner is not big enough as it is, you know, and it's like give a motherfucker a resurgence. Like if you're doing it like they did it for Mickey Rourke. They did it for Robert Downey Jr. Mel Gibson's going on his third resurgence. You know, like, do it to some... Like, Michael Bean has played some of the most memorable characters in Hollywood history. Everybody remembers Kyle Reese. You know, especially from the first two Terminator movies. Everybody remembers him as Hicks and Aliens. I mean, he has one of the most badass lines in the movie. He's like, mm-hmm. he, like when they're taking the guns away from him and he pulls out the shotgun, he's like, I like to keep this one on me for close encounters. It's like, what a badass. You know, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, he played the crazy Navy SEAL in The Abyss. Mm, and, I love that movie. Oh, so great. And then he played Johnny Ringo, which is an homage to him from Rock Bottom Creek, you know? So yeah. I'm oh, probably... Johnny Ringo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> yeah, that's yep, so great. I'm sure of it. I hate, I hate him. <laughs> I, I lo- like, I love Michael Bean in that movie. And that was the one thing, because in a way... Val Kilmer was kind of the Heath Ledger before Heath Ledger, if you think about it. Because, you know, when you watch Tombstone, even though everybody knows that every character in that movie was great, but everybody would always reference Doc first. Yep. They would Doc always Holliday. reference Doc Holliday. Yeah, he's got the most... I mean, <clears throat> he's got great lines, but it's like, dude, you, you're like, like, have you... Do you remember some of, like... Kurt Russell's lines or Johnny Ringo's lines. Like there is some great fucking dialogue that did not come out of Val Kilmer's mouth. And I remember being so mad because like even Stephen Lang that played Ike, the guy that always talks Mm. shit, which that's another inspiration for the Ringo character because he was such a shit talker. But when he was like, law don't go around here, law dog. And I just love how Kurt Russell shut him down. Yeah, I heard you the first time. (laughs) <laughs> like you know and there's so many great little things in there and it's like i love val kilmer but that's not the only reason why that movie's good you know i love at the train station and uh kurt russell's oh that you tell him i'm coming and i got hell coming with me and hell's coming with me and i love what he says to ike too where he's like so run you cur like it's so great you takes know the, takes the heel and digs it yeah into right face. into his lip oh it's so great <laughs> like but yeah, Tombstone's great. It really is. Like, like I'll be a Huckleberry. Oh, so awesome! You know what's also great? The Dark Knight. Yeah, and the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> you know, we should talk about that movie one time, man. Like, we, should. we should do an episode on the Dark Knight. What so, how do you think? feel about the Dark Knight Rises? Like, where do you sit? Well, for me, the Dark Knight Rises, I almost love. It's kind of not quite, but almost neck and neck with Begins for me. Yeah, because I mean, because. You know, when that before it came out, we went to go see it in the theater with my ex at the time. Yeah. I remember, like, I was up, like, you were like, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to read anything. Nothing. Not me. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, like, reading all this stuff on the internet. I know. And you kept wanting to tell, tell me. I and wanted I'm to like, tell Mick, you no. so bad. Because I'm a and big I'm like, spoiler guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't like spoilers. That's the only yeah. reason. He was the only person ever out of all my friends that I had to stop. I had to censor myself when it came to spoilers. <laughs> and, like, I remember, like, I was like, oh, my God, dude. Gary Oldman said something that told me everything I needed to know in an interview. Like they're asking him, like I'm, I'm like pulling the Batman detective work on the dark Knight rises because like, I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, is Bane a part of the league of shadows? And I know you can vouch for me because in the theater, I'm like, I fucking knew it. (laughs) I fucking knew it. Like, because they weren't, of course they weren't giving you all the information before the movie came out. Uh, but there were certain things that made me think it was like, I guarantee you either Joseph Gordon Levitt or Tom Hardy's character is going to be connected to the league of shadows because Gary Oldman said something that was very fucking revealing to me. I'm like rain man when it comes to movies, Mm -hmm. like instead of numbers, it's just like certain lines. Somebody will say, and like (laughs) Gary Oldman was like, Oh, it's a great movie. It really connects back with Batman begins. And I'm like, wait a minute. He said it connects to Batman Begins, it goes full circle. The League of Shadows is going to be in this movie. They're going to play a role somehow. I don't know how, but, you know, and then I started seeing Bane. Well, maybe it's Bane. 
you know, or maybe it's jo- or maybe there's a twist because there was all those twists and turns in the Dark Knight. Maybe it's not who you think it is. What if it's Joseph Gordon Levitt? What if he has a connection? I yeah. really like the Bane. I really like Tom Hardy was Bane so much just because he he played such a good Bane and they didn't even use the Venom angle. At no, all. no, like, it was amazing. He was just a. They did so. Though. <clears throat> His mask was. Like, well, they said it kept his pain at bay. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm saying he wasn't all roided out. No, and getting, no, you're you know, right. like in Batman. And he Robin. was big, but no, no he was definitely well, big. like that's the bane I came <clears throat> up on, man. Yeah, yeah. pumped full of that good juice. And he's, gonna, <laughs> he's gonna break Batman in half. Like. Oh, it was so great. Like I remember how me and him were so amped about the Dark Knight Rises. We were. Like, we could not fucking wait. Like, we couldn't get to the theater fast enough. Like, <laughs> because I remember the Avengers came out earlier that year, right? Mm. And, you know, so of course when the trailers came out, of course that was one thing you made an exception for. I'm like, I don't care. I want to see the fucking trailers. So yeah. and I was the same way. I'm like, dude, I got them all right here. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, so anyway, so like we're going and we're watching the Dark Knight Rises and, or no, the Avengers and they play the fucking Dark Knight Rises trailer yeah. in the theater. Ruin the Avengers for me. I didn't give a fuck about that movie after that. You know why? Because I'm sitting here thinking the entire time. I'm staring at the screen, not paying attention to anything that's going on. I'm like, I wonder what's going to happen in the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Is Gordon going to die? If he dies, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm sitting there thinking that the entire time. Not even giving a shit about the Avengers. Yep. You know, and like I kind of feel bad because I did watch it a couple of times afterwards and it still colored my perception of that movie since, (laughs) you know, because I'm like, I just can't get into it, man. That's probably the last time DC had any kind of like fuck you moment to Marvel. Yeah, exactly. Because after that, (laughs) it was just like, oh, sorry, DC, you just can't keep up with this shit. This train is not going to stop rolling. I I think like to me, I think the last moment that DC had was a fuck you. Well, it wasn't a fuck you in the way that I would have liked it to have been because still Marvel was kicking their ass, but Man of Steel. Yeah, it was great. You know, like, like I, you know, Michael Shannon is Zod. Was incredible. God, that dude acted as that. <clears throat> he, like, and it's funny too because I kept saying it's like the I Batman will begin. Find him. Oh, that it's so shit, great! Dude. Like, I love when uh, when he goes. Yeah, he was like, "I'll find him, Laura. I will find him." <laughs> like, yeah. I just love how he sounds when he's he being yells. put into the Phantom Zone. <laughs> Dude's like, "There's no way he's getting out of this thing." Like, <laughs> oh, especially he'll... when he's talking shit to the council, and he was yeah. like, "You know what?" <laughs> He was like, Cal was right. It was a pack of fools. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> love his character in the movie. And like, uh, yeah. And I mean, he was just, he was, he was the Raza ghoul mm-hmm. of Superman yeah. all day. Like, cause if you really think about it, he is kind of an archetype of that character in a way. Yeah. Cause like he was one, like, remember that line in Batman begins where he was like, you are my greatest student. It should be you standing by my side, saving the world. And you know, Bruce goes, I'm standing where I belong, you know, between you and the, and the people of Gotham. And that's basically that same concept, a man in steel between Zod and Superman, because, Mm -hmm. you know, like basically he's, he's implying through the whole movie, like, you know, you should be standing with me to, to save Krypton or try to, or or take over the earth and save Krypton people. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, Basically, the almost so that's how you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Christopher Nolan had his fingerprints all over that movie. Yeah, I was so hyped for that movie. I was too. I, I and then like I found out, you know, and this is something I wanted to talk about too about that because when Man of Steel came out, now it is kind of Dark Knight related because that was so inspired by the Dark Knight. Oh, I remember definitely. even in the trailer it said. Superman gets the Dark Knight treatment. I yep. remember them officially saying that in the trailers. I wish and, they would have <clears> taken... <throat> uh, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I wish they would have taken that and just ran with it instead of being scared of Marvel. That's exactly what I'm getting to. Oh, okay. I'm glad you said that because DC I remember the- Zack Snyder saying and when he first got announced, like I think he got the job in 2010, but mm-hmm. he did interviews for it a year before The Dark Knight Rises came out. And I, they asked him, he was like... So is this going to have any crossovers like the Marvel universe? And he was like, no, it's going to exist within its own. It's within its own universe, like Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. And I got so hyped because I'm like, cool. 
it can still kind of be a companion piece without being a companion piece, if yeah. that makes any sense. And that was the initial plan until that fucking Avengers movie came out and ruined everything. Yep. And ever since then, DC has never been the same because that was something I was going to talk about on Comic Book 101 earlier this year. But something was happening in the background. It was distracting me and I couldn't. <laughs> There's like they're signaling towards somebody. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? And I kept repeating myself. I'm like, I don't even remember what the fuck I was gonna say. <laughs> but like, but that's what it was. Right. And they were sidetracking me. But I'm like, that was something I wanted to talk about because, and then like when people were so pissed off. Remember when it got announced? It got announced the same year Man of Steel came out that Ben Affleck was cast as Batman. Yeah. Right. And. I remember they were like, everybody was pissed off about them. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm fucking mad that they're already rebooting Batman. It's yep. it, it's only like at that time, it had only been a year since the Dark Knight Rises came out. And the other thing I was mad about, it was like, oh, they're doing everything they shouldn't do. Because I honestly feel if <clears throat> they would have taken those same cues from the Dark Knight trilogy with Superman, I really think it would have been far more successful. Well, the thing with the, is Christopher <clears throat> Nolan was like, his whole world, there was no superpowers. Yeah. You know, like all his, everybody could be everybody in this. It was a know. heightened reality, yeah. Right, like <clears throat> Joker's... Just ruthless. He doesn't have a superpower. Yeah, to be a villain. You know, same with Bane. All that they didn't do the Venom, but Avengers. I mean, they yeah. showed the whole <clears throat> tear New York City apart. You see Iron Man. You do all that. Oh yeah. You can't go back to that after. It's like no. And I mean, it's like that I, wall had already been taken down. Even with Superman, they were still kind of stretching that yeah. whole thing. You know, because like, okay, well. I guess we'll have him have superpowers, but we'll try to make it the most realistic way as possible for him to have superpowers, you know? And, but that's what I, I liked about the, that's what I loved about those movies, because even if it was impossible things, they try to find a way to give you a rational explanation as to why these things could work. Yeah. Even if it's in our world, even as a heightened reality. And that's why, I was so pissed off that like they didn't continue with that direction because I mean, could you imagine how great that series would have been if they would have stayed so you, on course? Uh, so you didn't like Batman vs <clears throat> Superman? I didn't hate it. Like it, it, it was okay. It, it had moments in there. I really loved how Jeffrey Dean Morgan had a cameo as Thomas Wayne in the beginning of the movie. Mm. Um, you know, like, and I, I love Watchmen. Such I a fucking Watchmen, great yeah. movie. Like, uh, I just love <clears throat> Zack Snyder's aesthetic. Like, his aesthetic speaks to me. Yeah. Look at that high contrast. I really had more dark, high hopes gritty. for him when I heard he was going to be running the DC Universe. Like, I just was like, oh, yeah. You know, because I love 300. And I said, this this is going to be, could be amazing. Yeah. And they were like, it's going to be a darker, grittier take. See, That's what I want. Exactly. Like, I'm tired of and, the and, and pe campy, feel good the shit. The glitzy, like, kind exactly of glamour like, shit. Sometimes yeah. you got to get dirty. See, yeah. and that's funny. The world. That's where all three of us are completely in agreement on. Like, that's how we like our superhero movies. Yeah, and I exactly. think the Dark Knight trilogy kind of spoiled us when it came to that in a way. Because it's like, no, there's no other better way than the, how they're doing it. You know, like, like, don't get me wrong. I don't mind the Marvel Universe. Like, it's fun. It's a good time. It's a feel good. Yeah. But I want that contrast. Yeah, absolutely. I No, I couldn't agree more because, you know, with the exception of like, even though it's the smaller screen of the MCU, but like with Punisher and Daredevil, oh my God. I yeah. always lean so much towards that than I do any of the other, you know, popular Marvel yeah. cinematic Most definitely universe that characters. shit's right up my alley. Y you know, because it's like these are movies like, well, and here's the thing. Like with the Dark Knight, they made a really good point. The, the Dark Knight is basically if Michael Mann directed a superhero movie or if he did a Batman movie. Because the one thing that was really cool <clears throat> about the Dark Knight is it was heavily influenced by Heat. And you can see that, especially in the beginning of the movie when they're the robbing the bank. Scene. Yeah, and oh, and you good. see William Finster make a fucking cameo, and he was the Van Zant character mm -hmm. that Robert De Niro shot down in Heat. So there is already little like homages to Heat in that movie, and I'm such I've got such a massive heart on for Michael Mann. I was like, this movie is 
perfect for me. Like the, this trilogy is perfect for me because you're also taking things from other types of movies that mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of and you're melding it in to this melting pot for a superhero movie that makes it stand on its own because they were saying like Batman Begins was still kind of a superhero movie. And I don't yes and no, mm -hmm. because Batman Begins was kind of the beginning of that whole <clears throat> It's a superhero movie, but we're giving it a realistic approach. Yeah. And a lot of people say Spider-Man 2 started that, like that whole idea of giving it this kind of heightened reality yeah. and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, but what the Dark Knight did is they already were doing something that they're already kind of doing in Batman Begins, but taking it a step further in the Dark Knight. Yeah. And the Dark Knight Rises took it even further. And stuff like that. And that's what I love about those films. Like, because it's not your standard superhero movie. And, like, you know, like, for me, I think... I mean, I like the first Iron Man movie, you know, and I like the Incredible Hulk movie with Edward Norton and stuff like that. But those movies just got passe so fast for me, you know? Because yeah. it was like, this is too much. I'm that kind of person. You know this, too. When you give me something in an excess, especially if it's something I'm kind of a fan of, but not completely committed to. You get sick of it real quick. Yeah, really, really fast. It's like, I always use this analogy. A decade later, I'm still using this analogy. But it's like when I'd say, like, there could be a song on the radio that I really like. Mm -hmm. But then if you're fucking playing it in steady rotation, every time I get in the car and I hear it, you're going to pound that song right into the fucking ground for me. And oh, yeah, and never listen me. to it again. Yeah. I heard there's a <laughs> there's actually a phenomenon about that. Like, you play songs so much, people get sick of it. They don't want to hear it for a couple of years. But then you bring it back. Yeah. It, like, I brings back all of its... That's what I do. Yeah. I, some of that stuff has happened. But I think it's, like, with my more underground metal bands. Yeah. Because, you know, a hit for us is different than for a hit for, you know, mm -hmm. mainstream music or whatever. Well, it's like, okay, one of mine and Greg's favorite albums is... Chimera is the impossibility of reason and there's a song on there that i i think you already know when i'm where i'm going with this i've heard pure hatred and down again so many fucking times i didn't like, know that's what you were gonna say i'm like god pure hatred though and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that yeah. song goes oh, so hard yeah it's a great i mean don't get me wrong those songs are great but when I put on the impossibility of reason, it's almost guaranteed I'm going to skip them. It's like when you put in Pantera's vulgar display of power. Yeah. I will never listen to Walk ever again. Never. Ever again. It's ruined for me because I've Great heard... Great song. <laughs> was at one point in time. It was until the fucking radio <laughs> ruined it. You know, like... That's you know, how I do with songs. If I get a song in my head, I play that shit so I don't want to hear Well, you it know what's funny, though? We all kind of live this double standard, though, when it comes to music. If we're like wearing it out or, or no if we're playing it in excess it's okay but if somebody else is it's ruined yeah. like yeah you're it, right you know what i mean because it's like i could listen to d manufacture i god i listen to d manufacture god knows how many times now still love that record the only song on that out the only two songs on that album that i don't listen to is new breed and a therapy for pain but it's weird because replica is their big hit yeah but I still fucking love that song. I don't understand why I still do. But then when it comes to obsolete, I can't stand edge crusher. I can't stand edge crusher and I can't stand their fucking cover of that Gary Newman song cars. <laughs> I you can't know? stand that song. Either. <laughs> yeah, like I love everything on that album except for those two songs. But anyway, like my point is, is like when it, it's the same thing with movies too. If there's a certain thing that they're pushing really, really hard, like, Star Wars did it to me a long time ago. Like, because I was never, I was always kind of the minority on this. And it sucks because it's kind of like when you're a metal fan and you say you don't like Black Sabbath, you yeah. know? And there, a lot of people are like, are you kidding me? That's sacrilege. How do you not no, like no, no. Black It's like, it's like, uh, I like Black Sabbath. I hate Ozzy Osbourne. Exactly. And people lose their shit. And I don't like Ozzy Osbourne. I like Ronnie James Dio. But exactly. I, you know, and like, Holy that's that, that's not a popular opinion, though. You know, a yeah, lot of people, people freak are ignorant. Out. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like, and it's the same thing with Star Wars, too, to a certain degree. It triggers Tread people. Lightly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's a I huge Star Wars fan. I do it. <laughs> but, like, yeah, but I fuck with the trick, too. So. But, but, like, you know, the, the thing is, though, is like, 
I, when I was a kid, you know, I loved it. I still like Empire Strikes Back and I love Revenge of the Sith. Like, I like those movies, but I'm not what you would call a massive Star Wars fan. It's the yeah. same thing with Lord of the Rings, too. Me, oh, y- you know, oh. He, it's funny how this works. He's a huge Star Wars fan. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And, I'm a, and then you're just Punisher. And, <laughs> yeah, it was and kind I've of, watched all You know, it's funny. I thought you were going to say, and you're not a fan of neither. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of kind of true, but kind of not because I did like Empire. But like, yeah, I mean, that's... But I'm not a huge Star Wars fan either. Like, like I said before, I like it, but I don't love it as much as everyone else does. Yeah, Star yeah. Wars is like one of the first franchises I ever like. Just kind of blew me away when See, I was a kid. You and know? and I totally understand that because like for me. A lot of people who think I'm going to say my first franchise was the Halloween movies, but it wasn't. It was actually the Indiana Jones, the original Indiana yeah, Jones see, trilogy. I, love too. I, yeah. I absolutely love. <clears throat> like to me, if like somebody asked me what my favorite two trilogies are, because I mean I know there's a fourth Indiana Jones movie, but we're not going to talk about. We don't. That. Know that <laughs> that yeah, one. exactly. But like, I'm hoping they redeem it with a fifth one. God, I just you know, but you know how like there's those perfect trilogies, and you yeah. just want it to stay perfect. And yes. it's like I'd rather them not make another one than risk making another one and it's sucking. And like that was the thing with Indiana Jones. I felt like you had the perfect trilogy, yeah. and then you had to go and make that fucking Kingdom of the Crystal Skull shit. I don't give a fuck if you've got fucking uh, what's his name, Shy. British actor, um, oh. Kate Blanchett too. But um, oh fuck, I forgot his. Name. He was in the Point Break, uh, Point Break remake too. Um, he, he was in that Darren Aronofsky movie um, Noah as well. He was like one of the bad guys. And shit, I've Ray Winstone. Like mm. I don't care if you have him in it either. That sucked. Like like and. I think I watched an hour of it and I shut it off. Mm-hmm. Like I just didn't like it. And I'm like, really? You put this out after the last crusade. The last crusade is one of the fucking greatest. That's just like one of the, like if you look at Indiana Jones, every single movie, it's a lot like the dark Knight trilogy to me where every one individually is great for its own reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like <clears throat> same with the back to the future trilogy. That's Raiders weird. though, man. Oh, I love Raiders too. You know, I haven't seen Indiana Jones since I was a kid, so it's hard for me to recall. Oh um, yeah, I need to go back and rewatch that trilogy. They're all on. I have uh, it if you want to borrow Netflix. It. Also, <laughs> yeah, like uh, are they all on Netflix? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like the, just recently, I, I check I, that out. But Lucky it's, Ducky, Mister Jones. It's so <laughs> great though. But uh, there's a lot of people that have problems with Rises though. Like they don't see they do. Rises like it fits into the trilogy. As well as the other two. I don't agree with that. After Be- rewatching <laughs> it for this podcast, I agree with you. Like, yeah. it's a lot better than people are. I, it's because what it was coming up, going up against. Exactly. And like, that's. The it's, Dark Knight it's, is so great. Like, how do you compare to damn near perfection? Exactly. And it's yeah. one of those um, people already have these built in expectations. Yep. And they're like, oh, well, you had the Joker in the last one. And it's like. You guys do realize you guys had, what, four years to get the idea that Heath Ledger died? He ain't that, coming back and, this Yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. And, like, do you really want them to risk and recast him? You know, this isn't like Maggie Chillenhall and fucking Katie Holmes. Yeah, exactly. This is Heath Ledger. I don't care what actor you get. It's better to use another villain instead mm-hmm. of trying to rehash the same villain just because that's what everybody wants. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and I think they did a great job considering. I mean, to me personally, it's nothing against Anna Hathaway. She's a great actress. She might be the only part about that film I wasn't a big fan of. I thought she did a good job. She, uh, no, don't get me wrong. She did a good job. It was just but she didn't have a whole lot to do. Yeah, it yeah. was just kind of like one of those things where like there's so many other more interesting characters than she is. You know, like, or they could have made her more interesting. <clears throat> that like, given too. her more. Like, expanded on her backstory a little bit more or something, well, given her more to do. Exactly. I mean, it was, like, kind of, like, it's weird because some of the uh, supporting characters I found to be more interesting than Catwoman. Like, you know, Matthew Modine is, is uh, P- Officer Foley, you know, Gordon's partner. Yeah. You know, and everybody knows him as Joker from, f- ironically enough, from uh, fucking Full, Full Metal, Metal Jacket. Jacket. I thought his character was great in it. And... 
I loved uh, Ben Middleton's character, John Daggett, the guy that was working with Bane. Mm. Like he was, he was such a memorable character. Like I don't know why he stood out to me, but it was like, I paid you a small fortune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was and like, this gives you power. It gives you power over me. You know, like, and it's so great. And he was like, "You're pure evil. I'm necessary evil." Yeah. Like, but his, but Ben Middleton is such a great actor. And that movie, I was like, this guy's great. Like, he, you know, like even when they're in the board meeting and he was like arguing about Bruce Wayne being on the board and he'd said that he should leave and stuff like that. Like, there were so many other characters in there that I found to be more interesting, even not the main characters, to be more interesting than, than the Selena Kyle character. Not only that, but you didn't, <clears throat> I didn't believe their chemistry. Batman. And no, Selena it Kyle. seemed a little contrived. It, it's 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 kind of weird because if you think about it, the Talia al Ghul chemistry seemed way more believable than the yeah, Selena right. Kyle. You know, like even though she completely fucking knifed him and stabbed him in the back. I or, still love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think uh, the. Uh, Aaron Eckhart did a good Harvey Dent. Oh, he was excellent. That's a, you but know what I, feel... I didn't really like him as Two Face. Really? No. Wow. I I have the same reaction. I'm like I thought wow. he was. I don't great. know if it, it's not necessarily his acting. I think it's just like the way they did him up. <laughs> oh, you mean you like know, the like, physical like, appearance? Yeah. My like, wife actually had a comment Tommy about Tommy Lee that. Jones is better looking as Two Face. She. Yeah. My, you know, my wife I love is like Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> he's a great actor. <laughs> he really you know. is. My wife was like, if you got burned like that, it wouldn't look like that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. it'd be a lot messier. It well, was like perfectly symmetrical with his face. That's like, and, and that eye that's like dangling out, yeah. that would have been gone. That's what I'm saying. That's, like well, he it kinda, would definitely look more sickly than that. He, like. he, he kind of looked like Dark Man a little bit, you know. Like and and that's kind of ironic considering that Liam Neeson was in the first movie and he had a cameo on the Dark Knight Rises, but like. I you know but honestly I love the Two Face character I, I like to, it too <clears throat> because like here's the thing at the end of the Dark Knight I loved that whole dynamic where he's holding Gordon's family hostage mm. and like I you know everybody was like the Joker stole the show but I felt like that last act really stole the, mm -hmm. sh the like stole the show at the end of the movie because you're in so much suspense like. Oh my God! There's been so many twists and turns that I've seen in this movie. Is one of Gordon's kids gonna get killed? Is Gordon gonna get killed? God, I'm gonna be so fucking mad. I made it so far, and then they just kill Gordon. Yeah. You know, like this is bullshit. Or I mean, I don't want his family to get killed either. And then you know, none of those things happen. But it was great because if anybody sat there and said they saw that movie and they were like, "Yeah, I knew that shit was gonna happen." No, you fucking didn't. No. Nobody did because yeah. there was so much shit that was going on in that film that you did not see coming, you know, unless you're like this amazing savant at just being able to figure out a plot device, like fucking you, Rain Man style. There's no yeah. way. People used to do that <clears throat> back in the day when they were talking about Saw. Yeah. They're like, oh, I knew the ending before it even came. I know the fuck you didn't. Yeah. Nobody Nothing. saw the motherfucker on the floor. Getting <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. You, that's such horse shit. You made a guess and you were right. Yeah. That doesn't mean you knew. Exactly. <laughs> it, I, I think like, the only movie that I could say, like, legitimately, I was like, oh, shit. I didn't see this coming, but there was one thing I did predict. I saw the first scream in the theater when it came out. I knew Billy Loomis was fucking guilty all day long, but I didn't know Skeet he had it. Yeah, yeah, Skeet Ulrich. He just got a guilty face. <laughs> but, well, yeah, he does, doesn't he? he? Does. But I didn't know he had an accomplice. Mm -hmm. That I didn't Lillard see coming. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, they got me there. But they did not get me on fucking Skeet Ulrich. And they, I remember watching the movie and they kept like panning down on the boots of every character who was wearing a pair of boots. I'm like, no, you're not going to fucking get me with that. I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous because I was like 12 years old when the movie came out. But like, I swear on everything that I love, I just knew that it was fucking Skeet Ulrich. There was just something about it. Well, then they say kids can see things that even adults can't yeah, see Yeah, because they pick up on things that adults don't. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And, and I think it was just one of those things. Yeah. Like, I, I saw the movie. I'm like, no, nah, that motherfucker's guilty. He's, he's, he's totally doing all this shit. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it. You know, like. What's that other movie <clears throat> he's in? Uh, as good as it gets. 
Oh, you just um, tell he's gonna fuck him over. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he just has true. that face. He's like, got that typecast kind of. Like, this guy's gonna fuck somebody over. Well, for this movie you know what's funny over. too? A lot of people called Skeet Ulrich like the poor man's Johnny Depp because he, he, he looks a he lot like too. Johnny Depp. <laughs> and ironically enough, both actors have worked with Wes Craven. You know, because Johnny Depp was in a Nightmare oh, yeah, on Elm Nightmare, Street. Yeah. You know, and like. But yeah, I mean, I kind of see why, but it's like, that guy had so much promise. What the fuck happened? <laughs> you know, like, because he was a good actor, you know, like, you know, it's it's not like that Dennis Quaid situation where you're like, oh yeah, it's Dennis Quaid. I'm not going to go and see that. <laughs> better yet, wait, Randy Quaid. <laughs> Randy Quaid's so much better than Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Certain movies. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's, 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 him as the uncle in the vacation movies. Oh, yeah. Fucking classic. But like... But yeah, I mean, but that's the thing though. Like the Dark Knight Rises, I loved it. Like, I was going again not to be that guy that's like I love this movie for sentimental reasons, but I was going through a really bad time. Mm-hmm. A year after the movie came out, I went through my first breakup, and you guys all know the first breakup is the fucking worst. Yeah. Like you feel like you just want to die. <laughs> you know? like it's, your your soul is fucking making crushed. Mix tapes. Yeah. Right. You're making mixtapes for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get you through Tuesday, man. I'm telling you. But like, I was watching the dark Knight rises so much during that period of time, mm-hmm. because as kind of cheesy as it sounds, but like at the time I was putting myself and, and Bruce Wayne's place because he was, broken after everything happened in the dark night and i'm like it's so identifiable even though it's completely different reasons completely yeah. different circumstances and all that but it helped me see that there was some kind of hope it mm. instilled some kind of hope within me that like things will get better it really fucking sucks right now but it's gonna get better yeah at least you didn't latch <clears throat> on to movies like falling down oh dude There's you no... want to talk about a bummer man <laughs> like <laughs> That's a great movie, but and, and I can't remember who I was having a conversation with. We're talking about movies that still make us cry to this day. I don't know what the fuck it is about Falling Down, but that ending scene where you see the family on the video and you see the dog looking all fucking sad and shit looking at the TV and it's making that like kind of sad sound and you felt bad for Michael Douglas, even though, yeah, he lost his mind. And you know, he had like good reasons. Yeah, he really yeah, had he good really reasons. He wanted to go like that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and like even like even though it was so sad, like before Robert Duvall shot him, and he was like, "Don't you want to see your daughter behind bars?" and shakes his head, no. And it's like he's got a really good fucking point. You yeah, know, I wouldn't it's, want my kids to see me like that. Exactly. You know, it's like I and then especially now when you are a father, it's like. Fuck, dude, it just made it even deeper. Yeah. It was already deep as it was when I saw it as a kid. And it, I didn't think it could get more real than this. And then, like, it, but it, it's one of those movies still to this day that fucking, it's a tearjerker for mm-hmm. me. You know, like, there's certain movies that just, you'll never stop. It'll always resonate with you. Yeah. yeah. Like, <clears throat> Warriors, that for me, every time yeah, I watch Warriors. Same here. I, I That scene with Nick Nolte, every. Time. Every goddamn time, like I went. Wait, which fucking, one? The casino or the the casino and the, the hotel? The, the hotel scene. Uh, man, Both, se- dude. Like I'm sitting there, like when me and me and my girl watched it, I'm fighting back tears yeah. the entire time. <laughs> me like, too. I think mine was Law Abiding <laughs> Citizen. Oh, that's a great one. That too. is a good one. That's funny too because my I, I like that movie a lot. My girlfriend loves Gerard. Butler. I always think in my <laughs> head like, "Wow, Gerard Butler took his time, planned that shit out perfectly." He really did. I, as a father and husband, would not have been able to do that kind of planning. No. I would have went and killed the motherfucker. Guns blazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and that's an unfortunate thing too. For if that was something like that to happen to us in real life, we'd get fucking stalled out yeah. one way or another yeah. because we're so not. You know, um, not cerebral. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is cerebral. We're not planning it out to execute a good plan. We just want, we just want our fucking cake and eat it too. Kind of, you know, situation. We're just driven by emotions. Yeah, yeah. Even if I go in there, like I'm thinking, I'm gonna walk in there like Rambo and take everybody out. You get fucking shot the moment you open the door, and like that's why in some movies, 
like you see that kind of shit happen and you know it's realistic but you ever notice it still pisses you off because you're yeah, like this would never fuck man happen. i know it's real man but i don't want to fucking see that shit exactly. like <laughs> it's like this is too realistic it's too real i don't want to watch it oh <laughs> this guy's got to get a victory his life sucks like everything bad that could have happened has happened you know like but yeah i, I mean that's but you know, back to the Dark Knight Rises. Did you uh, did you see the Talia Ghul twist at the end, or did it like well, really surprise yes. you? Something about that um, bitch just seemed off to me. Really it well did because, it. well, also remember before we went to go see the movie, there was a rumor. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, this is already lining up with some of the theories yeah. that I already have. I think that was the <clears throat> one spoiler that leaked to me that she was Talia Ghul, and I'm like, fuck. Because I remember reading about that, too, so mm-hmm. it might have been the same source we Probably. found out from, because I remember being like, I mean, yeah, it's cool that they put the Talia Gould character in here, but God damn it, I wish I wouldn't have seen it coming from yeah. a mile away. You know, it's like, because it was just one of those things, that's the one thing that I can say the Dark Knight brilliantly executed. They tried so hard with one and three, mm-hmm. but like... It didn't help that, you know, Batman Begins had a fucking children's book out that told you everything that happened <laughs> yeah. in the movie. And then The Dark Knight Rises comes out and it's just kind of like, yeah, somebody's a part of the League of Shadows. I, I don't know how I knew that. I just felt it. And right. it's like I said, and, and well, there's certain things. If you pay attention to what some of the actors say. Like, yeah, like, that's what I was gonna say. Know, like, she, like, why is this chick the only one that's super like on board with keeping this super secret project that's just burning through money? Yeah, and Wayne Enterprise. She's the only one. That's exactly. Like, Take my millions. Let's yeah. keep this thing afloat. You e- know what exactly. I mean? And then, and well, yeah. And then, like that that interview with Gary Oldman about the movie, mm-hmm. and he says it completely connects back to Batman Begins. I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck. Well, I think I know what's gonna happen. Then I think some of these theories I have. Are coming true, and I was almost right. I just didn't. I kind of dismissed that, like the Talia Ghoul thing. I remember reading about it, and I thought maybe it was a possibility. But then, towards when we got closer to seeing the movie, no, nah, they're not going to do that. That's too predictable. Mm-hmm. And they did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like fuck. Well, like I was telling you, my wife suggested we watch them backwards. Watch Rises. The Dark yeah. Knight, and then begins. I was like, okay, whatever. Like mix it up a bit. But I'm glad she did that. Because I always watch The Dark Knight and then I watch Rises and you're just always comparing the two. Yeah. But watching uh, Rises <clears throat> first, you get to really appreciate it for what it is. Like, I haven't seen The Dark Knight in so long. It's been a couple of years, so a lot of it's not fresh in my watch memory. Watch shit every time it's on. Yeah, right? Yeah. And then Rises, I was like, man, people don't give this movie enough credit. It is so well done. It is. Like, it really is. Like, the little is. problems that people have with it, like, please, just let it go. It's not that serious. It I mean, really, that's the thing yeah. about it. Like, you can argue all day about certain superhero movies. It's not fucking real to begin with. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're going to be that big of a dick to hold on to that little bit of... I know. You know it's so annoying. But that's that's what makes <sighs> comic book nerds so passionate and so, you know... Yeah. Spiteful about this shit. Like, well, I mean, we kind I want of it to be just like the comics, but I want it to be different and better. At and the same and we time. also come from that like comic book world yeah. where there's so many purists, and it's a lot like with me and Greg's world with metal and stuff like that. Is there's so many purists like, no, it needs to be like this, or there's a certain standard that they have. If you mm-hmm. don't follow it or or anything, like they flip out. But we're all guilty of it too, you yeah. know. Because man, I went back and forth on the 2004 Punisher movie so many times because there was, I mean, there's still things. Even though I I've grown to appreciate that movie again, there's still things about it that bother the shit oh, out yeah, of me. For real. You know, like, but like other than that, you know, I mean, it's like I was telling. I think I might have brought this up earlier but i i was i know i talked to craig about it but like i had this like i was saying about that theory about when people say they want something different mm. i don't believe that because yeah. pe- most people that say that if you notice everything they listen to everything they watch is similar in some way right. you know like it's always like very very kind of like um what's the word i'm looking for very very um Shit, I forgot the word, but it's very similar to the thing. It's like when you talk to somebody who listens to music or something, and like, oh, I don't like it because it's not different. Oh, like- you know what my favorite one is? Is like, 
I listen to uh, I listen to all kinds of music. Oh, I listen to pop yeah. and country. No, you're listening to the same music, with just with different instruments. You know, it's it's true too because it's funny, I, I, and exactly. I think we've had that specific conversation because I was like, "Do you listen to metal?" No, nope. well then you don't listen to everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, <it's> like, <laughs> you know, and then that's the same thing. Like with um, I but like when you hear somebody say that, it just fucking drives me nuts because it's like you're so full of shit because you want things to be exactly the same. You just don't want to come out and admit that. It's like, I would have so much respect for you. If you're like, no, but I, I think they don't even know that. Like probably they want to not listen to things different, but if it's too different, they shy away from it. Yeah. And they're like, no, my little... bad, man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. It's like, I've heard so many people say, like, when it comes to, especially in music, like, I've heard so many people be like, oh, there's not any good music out there anymore. And it's like, no, if you want to find good music, it's just you're not going to always find it in the obvious places. And not they even it to just. to be on the radio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not even just heavy music, just music in general. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you, you know, I've found so many indie rock bands just by, like, I remember going to Sound Exchange like 11 years ago. I think I told you this yeah. story, the Apple Seed cast. Yeah, um, and like walking in there, and I went there to buy the the third Devil Driver album that was coming out, you know. And I they're playing this indie rock band, and the lady would have never known because the way I was expressing my enthusiasm for it, I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" And she's like, "Uh, the the Apple Seed cast." <laughs> Why you don't like it? No, I fucking love it. Where's the CD at? I want to buy it. <laughs> it was so That's funny. good. <laughs> yes. you, uh, you, sorry, know, you know, you know what like... got me into blues? <laughs> what what is blues it? Blues music. You know, it's not something I've had a chance to experiment with yet. Yeah. I've heard some, and what I've heard, I liked. I mean, you know. You know, but that's something I would like to explore. Like right now, I'm trying to explore outlaw country. You know, like, because that kind of country music I enjoy. Yeah. You know what you would like? Uh, that uh, Sturgill Simpson? No, I was I was talking about uh, Mike Judge, Tales from the Tour Bus. Yeah. He does a whole season on outlaw country music. Oh, okay. Wa- cool. uh, Waylon Jennings and Will yeah, Nelson. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I've been wanting Johnny to Paycheck, explore. I just haven't got around to it yet. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Especially when you're into like heavier music, you're always trying to check out what's going down the pike right now, or what's coming up. What... You often miss out on other good music outside of metal. That's the problem. That's the problem. Like being passionate about a certain genre of music, if it's like metal and hardcore, is like there's so many subgenres within that genre. Yeah. So you get fucking caught up in that. And like, and then you miss out on so many of these other great bands outside of the genre. Like, fuck. You know, like, I've got to figure out, like, this is so hard to navigate sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, because, like, I mean, the same thing can be said about rap to a certain degree, you know, depending on what your taste is, what era you like and stuff like that. There's still good rap out there, too. Yeah. I, I mean, I am strictly coming from an entry level point of view from that because I am no expert in that. It's topic. just like how there's metal purists, there's hip hop purists. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. You know, there's people that feel like hip hop should only be this way. Yeah, and, absolutely. And they'll say that nothing out anymore except their music is. is yeah, it's from pure. their era, yeah. and that's or it. it. This guy sounds like this guy, so he knows he he knows what it's all about. You know. And yeah. You have guys out there that are just. I don't care about any of that shit. I'm doing what I yeah, think. Dude, it's a yeah, it's hot, you know? like mm-hmm. at the Absolutely. end of the day, that's what yeah, it is. It's, like, it really would. you know, um, but yeah, like I, I mean, that's that's the thing though. Like I think that and the same thing obviously gets be said about the Dark Knight trilogy. Like there's some people that are still 89 Batman purists. You know, like I love those first two movies. There's still yeah. a special place yeah, in my yeah, heart yeah. for them. But I still think Christopher Nolan did a way better job than sure. Tim Burton did, you know. Like, but that's just a matter of opinion at the end of the day, you know. Like, I, just, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like <clears throat> Seth Rogen and Neighbors. Like, when I think of who Batman is, yeah, Michael Keaton's just Batman. Yeah, so, and and I get that too. I mean, I understand. Like, I mean, Michael Keaton is my second favorite Batman. But, but we're gonna have this problem now with the Joker. And uh, since uh, we're already going off the rails, yeah, like, why don't we <clears throat> touch on the. Joaquin oh, Phoenix before the Joker. end of the show, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you? Uh, 
What are your thoughts, um, opinions well, we on We were talking it? about doing an episode for that when it came out, so maybe we should have Mick back for that. Well, we I, why can't we just talk about it now? I mean, I mean yeah, we, we can too. I'm just saying. Yeah, like, we can, we know. could do both. Oh, you mean after it comes out? Yeah, like oh, like oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, I thought you meant like before it comes out. Oh, whatever. You know what I meant. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the only thing I could say is Poor I'm actor. very open to it even though but there's one thing that I do have to say though. This looks really good. But at the same time, I am so sick and tired of so many fucking Batman characters getting reboots, <laughs> and they're focusing on the same two characters. Like, mm. but this one ha- is an exception because I like where it's coming from. Like, this it's inspired by Taxi Driver and Scorsese and stuff like that. It's basically like, what if Scorsese did a a, a Batman movie about the Joker? Mm-hmm. That's exactly fe- producing it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, and it's that's interesting. That's an interesting way to go about it. Yeah. And that was really the one thing, like, at first I'm like, oh, my God, seriously, another fucking Joker movie. Yeah, I was the same way, yeah, but you then know, I started looking my, more into My it. whole thing is just, like, I, I felt like Jared Leto didn't even get a fair shake at it when he No, tried to he it. didn't. Yeah, you, you know, know, people rag on his so bad. Jared, if you anybody say Jared Leto can't fucking act, they're crazy. It's oh, yeah, that's, that's complete bullshit. Put his work in. He, you know he's, what I mean? he's a great actor. I mean, and, yeah. and that's and that's the thing, too. I have no reason to defend that movie or defend Jared Leto at all because I didn't really like Suicide Squad that much, but it had nothing to do with him. Right. Yeah. I, I, I love David Ayer, the director of that film mm-hmm. he's done so many and you are too i love certain like, characters in that movie I yeah i love the overall movie well it's much, like when but... you think about the films that david ayer did previously like fury harsh end times end of watch those are fucking great movies and you're like yep you can tell there was a lot of studio meddling in this movie harsh times is on his list oh i can't wait it's yeah, great well if you like end of watch i'm sure you'll like harsh i did like times. end of watch like, like, it, like it's a love great fury yeah, oh, Fury. Yeah, Fury then was he'll amazing. he'll definitely like harsh times. Oh, I, know. I don't it's have not gonna any be like doubt. A surprise. But we Did, are on the. Uh, oh, sorry, you were talking about David Ayer. Did you like Bright? Yes, yes. Bright he didn't was like great. Bright. Really? Fuck Bright. <laughs> <laughs> movie sucked ass. I, I thought it was Will Smith. Period. Man. I, I, I thought, thought he it did was a great. Dead shot. I thought it was way better than fucking Suicide Squad. Like all I day mean, long. If you're comparing the two, yeah, it was better, but it still wasn't a good movie. <laughs> oh, I liked it. Like it, it's I the close. Like the social commentary was just beating over our heads throughout that whole movie and i, I could see it. i could see that like yeah, I, I mean it, joel egerton played a an orc and i'm a real really biased to him because yeah. i fucking love joel egerton <laughs> like you know so it's like he's good yeah like, like he's i i've been a fan of him since smoke and aces even though like people forget he played that stupid like um assistant it is a role of the cinema <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he's like uh, I think it is cinnamon roll. And he was it like, looks like jizz. Yeah, it's, it's Eastern, Eastern European, European jizz. jizz. <laughs> Jeremy Piven, fucking great. Oh, movie, it was such man. a great movie. It's on your list, isn't it? It's such an interesting I movie, so. too, that <laughs> dynamic of that movie, because for one, Joe Carnahan is super underrated. I Every he movie he's done, I love. Like, I love Narc. I loved fucking Smoking Aces. I love the A Team movie. Fuck what anybody says about that. Movie. It was a lot was, better than I thought it was. Gonna same be. here. Like it, it was it, a fun it movie. It kind of. It, 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 oh, you got Rampage see it. actually. If did you like good job. those great buddy cop movies yeah. from the eighties, like Beverly Hills Cop and Forty Eight Hours, there is no reason why you shouldn't enjoy this movie because it has that kind yeah. of formula to it. It's fun. It's funny. A lot of action. Yeah, a lot of action. It, it's some people call it mindless action movie, but it's one of the. To me, it's. One of the last movies that was able able to capture that kind of era of action movies, where it's like, yeah, it's not exactly the most intricate story, but it's a fun movie. It's just yeah, there's a difference between being <sighs> like mindless action and being just a fun movie, like John yeah. Wick. Like I love John Wick, exactly, but he hates it. Let's <laughs> say yeah, yeah, I do. But yeah, I, I mean, and that that's the thing. Like I've, I've, I like Keanu though, and and the Gray man, that's such a great fucking movie with Liam Neeson. Yeah, like I've seen it. Yeah, some people are like, I'm fucking pissed off. All of them is just fighting some wolves. (laughs) (laughs) I think they should have put that bonus scene in in, in it, though. Yeah. They should have had to wait to the end to see it. Oh, man, it was so great. Like, one of my favorite lines in that movie is with Frank Grillo, Mm. where it was like, oh, I found some books. It's like, what's what's the name of the book? It's called We're Fucked, bestseller. (laughs) 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 It's so great. 
<laughs> it was shit. such a great movie. Yeah, like, but yeah, I mean, and and like he's doing this other movie that's coming out. I I haven't seen a trailer for it, but it's called Boss Level, and it's got Mel Gibson and Frank Grillo in it. And I'm like, those are two great actors. I fucking like. I've loved Frank Grillo since Edge of Darkness. Like, and that's another very underrated movie. And I love what he says to Matt Craven's character. He's like, he's like, you look like shit, Craven. Sit down, lay down, die. <laughs> like, yeah. And then like Matt Mel Gibson fucking shoots him in the knee, and he falls down the stairs and shit. And like, just he's such a great bad guy like Frank mm-hmm. Grillo but he's yeah. a great good guy too he's kind of the same but there's just something about him he has this charm he to him he did a good job in the uh, the damn Purge movies yeah yeah he and, and he was in, in Warrior those. also he was um, fucking uh, Joel Egerton's trainers, trainer right? yeah, yeah. And, like he, he's a great actor like before I think he was one of the only other actors besides um, John Bernthal that I was like, he would make a great Frank Punisher. Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like He's those, got one on Netflix right now with fucking... Uh, is it called Point Blank? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the Anthony Mackie. Yes. It looks like it's I pretty good. I love Anthony Mackie, too. Like, that fucking um, Pain and Gain is one of the best love movies Michael movie, Bay has man. done in a long time. <laughs> That movie made me laugh so fucking Keep hard. Keep looking at like, me like that. I'll be a stepfather by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. It's such a great movie. I remember watching it once and just laughing my ass off. Oh, God. I barely remember it, though. People don't give The Rock enough credit because they think well, he just does nothing but endless action movies. No, he, he was He showed hilarious. some range on he that did. shit. He did. Then, Funny, cokehead. Like, oh, he my God. Th- then also, Anthony Mackie was really funny in it, too. He was like... He was like, "How do you get big like that? You drink some some fruit smoothies? Yeah. Some sm- <laughs> you guys want some smoothies? Yeah. You want some smoothies? <laughs> Inside yeah. joke, sorry, I, I couldn't help it. It was funny. Either way. That's another story we'll have to tell for like another podcast. <laughs> all right, well, we're coming up on two hours and thirty minutes, and I have a feeling we could go on all yeah. day. So I think I we're gonna, gonna wrap it up. Yeah, here. I was gonna podcast say this is the pod marathon. Thing. <laughs> yeah. right. um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put up the whole thing. I'm not gonna break it up. So awesome. Okay. Yeah. We didn't talk about the Dark Knight a whole lot, but whatever. I think it'll be. We a touched fun, on it a lot. <laughs> a fun episode. To listen a lot of to. twists. A lot of turns. Y'all thought it was gonna be this. It was fucking that. Yeah, it's a <laughs> twist episode. It yeah. really is. But oh, yeah. See, it's I'd, got curveballs like the Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's I don't right. know how Nick feels, but I'd love to have you back. To yeah, do sure, absolutely. Man. It's been fun, man. No, it really was. This is probably, I think, by far one of the best interviews I've ever done. Really? Like, yeah. Like, it's it's been a lot of fun. Well, it's also kind of... We try to keep a, it cash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. it's not anything fancy. It was just fun. Like, yeah. we, we didn't go in there like... You know, it's kind of funny. We go in there like we got our fucking, you know, our um, our war armor on, ready yeah, to fucking I do that battle. every week when I come here. Like, I'm ready to shred him. And then we just end up finding something we agree on about it. And I'm just like, you know, we just fucking I know, it's, sit in it's there like, and fucking stroke each other for an hour, right? Like, none of that seemed like an argument. You know that, right? It's like, mm-hmm. man, you know, maybe we should change the title of the show. Like, it's kind of, be, you know, it's kind of not exactly <laughs> been the case. cinema. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have some of that. Oh, well. that's so true. <laughs> I just want it to be a fun podcast. No, that's a lot of fun. that's that's how it should be. Yeah, I had a lot of fun too. Like I would definitely come back in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you, man. Yeah, was, absolutely. Uh, this is good times. I, Maybe I, after the Joker comes out, we can all talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I, I think that's something. You know, my girlfriend's very picky about what movies to go and see in the theater, so I think that might be one that she'll you know check out. Like, yeah. come on, it's the Joker. Yeah, right. <laughs> Joaqu- Joaquin Phoenix is the Joker. Uh, yeah. For- she has to see produced. Walk the Line. Like she'll know why you have to go see that. Yeah, so. exactly. I, you know, I mean, Commodus and Gladiator. You know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I yeah, I, I would definitely one. No, I'll definitely come back one hundred percent. Well, it was a, uh, it was a good episode. Uh, it was. I'll see you uh, next time we do this. Yes. See you later for the Joker. Later. Check it out.